Hi everyone, and welcome to the Drake Michigan platform. And on the couch today, we have Rachel Fay. Now, Rachel Fay is a mom of three, a wife, an entrepreneur. She runs her own marketing and branding, branding agency. And on top of that, which is not enough already, we want to delve into Rachel's hobby, which is more like a profession. And that is because Rachel is actually a woman's bodybuilder. So today we're going to delve into the craft, the art and the sport and topic that is women's bodybuilding and the dedication and commitment that it must take to get to the levels that Rachel has met. So without further ado, let's welcome Rachel to the platform and let's delve in to today's episode. Before we start, I need to give a big shout out to how this platform is even possible. And that is predominantly by you, the listeners, who not just tune in each episode, but you take the action in your own lives and purchase things like our transformative online manifestation course and the supporting Create Your Dreams journal. It's by you, the subscribers, purchasing the wonderful products that we promote from the likes of Masterpiece, your heavy metal detox supplement, to Strong Life for all your premium health products, and of course, Natural Shilajit. So, with all this out of the way, let's introduce today's wonderful and insightful guest. Hi, Rach. Hi, Kev. <laughs> you okay, Rach? Yeah, good. Uh, thanks, thanks for being on. Let's have a shake. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, we already know, like, I know a little bit about you, and I know you're so busy. Because, you, you, you know, you have your own amazing marketing agency and the platform. And you're a busy, you're a mum of three. Um, you're, a, you're obviously a wife. And everything what goes with being a mum these days, which is more than enough. Yeah. But on top of all of that, you actually do bodybuilding. Yeah. Now, first of all, what pops into my head is, where do you find the time to do bodybuilding? But not just... Because you do it at a level that you compete. It's competitive, yeah, yeah. So let's let's get back in. First of all, how do you get into a a sport or a, is it a sport? Yeah, it's a sport. So yeah, how do yeah. you get into something like that? So for me, a lot of my friends, like I had a completely separate, different, opposite lifestyle to what I've got now. So when I was younger, I smoked, I ate rubbish. Um, I was just naturally thin, so kind of nothing caught up on me and, and whatnot. And when I had the children, I just become a little obvious other things in my life that had that had happened. I just become a little bit more determined to. Um, in fact, starting from the beginning, I actually I used to smoke. Yeah. I used to be a smoker, and I gave up smoking. I gave up smoking, and it was one of the best things I ever did. Not just through through health, but through understanding what I was capable of doing and overcoming okay. and it gave me a completely different outlook on life and I changed that's the point in my life where I really changed so what what made you quit smoking was it just willpower or did someone say something to you or did something happen I didn't it was admitting to myself I think because when you smoke well, well when you smoke you try and quit and all these all these sorts of things to quit like nicotine patches and vapes weren't a thing at, at the time but nicotine patches and doing this and doing that you were you were sort of set up to to fail if you like okay because when we're using nicotine patches it doesn't really help you know you think it's going to be some miracle when in reality the only way to do something is to commit and be disciplined enough willpower and all this doesn't come into it it's being disciplined and understanding that it's not going to be easy it's going to be hard and you've got to get through it and I think that's what I took from that and applied in life because we're taught when I say we're set up to fail we're taught a lot of the time that there's an easy way to do something Yes. So, for example, going back to, you know, there's an easy way to diet. If you follow Slimmer's World, you're going you're gonna to lose X, Y, and Z. But it's what you put into that. It's the meals that you're cooking. It's not lying to yourself. It's not picking at the packet of crisps or a crisp that the kids are having or a chip off the plate. And it's this, you know, it's, it's putting your mind into focus and going, this is going to be hard, but this is what I need to do. 
yeah. that's the only way I can reach that goal. Is it? Is it? Is it like reprogramming? Because we talk a lot about here of like a manifestation and changing your mindset. So when you want to sort of quit smoking, so obviously that was the catalyst of what took you on to other stuff. Is it a process of changing your mindset? So, so, so you suddenly, you get to a point where you no longer want that cigarette or, you know, you want to reach out for that chip or... How do you feel about it? Yeah, I think it's, it is. It's changing your mindset and understanding that things can be hard. And if something's hard, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Because we're taught, you know, if, you, if you're out of breath in the gym, it's too hard, you can't do it. But no matter what your fitness level is, you're always going to be pushing harder. So I've, I've trained with professional boxers, professional bodybuilders, and they're out of breath training because they're not because they're unfit they're some of the fittest people i've ever known but they're still always pushing that boundary whereas we're told you know if we're out of breath you know i've trained people before myself in the gym the couples who've come in and said you know we want to lose weight i'm not a a personal trainer just to try and help them out give them a little start in the fitness journey and they're really paranoid about getting out of breath and tired and it being hard but sometimes we have to embrace when something's hard or difficult, we have to embrace the the difficult things in life yeah. because we can get through. Which so is not is. easy because a lot of people quit. Well, of course it is because we're looking for an easy answer. So if, if we decide we're going to start a business, you're not just going to, you know, people aren't seeing the, the sleepless nights. People aren't seeing, you know, when you're worrying because you, you, you've you took the plunge, you've left a full-time job and, you know, you, you're on your own now and are you going to get the money in? Are you going to be able to provide for your family, et cetera, et cetera? You don't see that side of it. So when it, And you never told that side of it. No. So when it happens, you're kind of like what's this this is a bit this is a bit alien it shouldn't be like this you know going back to the smoke when you've got my nicotine patch on this shouldn't be hard oh it's probably i'm just not meant and i hear that a million times my mum says that i'm just not meant to quit i'm meant to smoke you know and it's that it's that kind of so it is a mindset but there's no willpower you don't just you don't just wake up and go i feel okay not smoking now yeah i think it's admitting it and going it's really hard i came down the stairs and I said to my husband at the time, oh, well, he's still my husband now, but at the time I said to him, I'm going to quit smoking and I'm going to be a nightmare for about 12 months. Okay. Because I just wanted to go a full circle, going on holiday, you know, kind of getting off the plane where, you know, and I was, I'd was i set myself up for all these obstacles that were going to happen. And if they didn't, then that was a bonus. I wasn't looking on the negative side. I was just being realistic not yeah. negative, I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do that. It was just, it's tough. If I yeah. want to quit smoking, it's down to me. No one's going to yeah. save me. And that's what I always say with everything. No one's going to save you. You have to save yourself. So what So what age did you make this decision to quit smoking? I stopped smoking when I was 26. And you'd been smoking since, what, 16? Yeah. 16. Oh, 15, 16. So, and would, would you put smoking in the same category and bracket as any other addiction? Like, I know, like, obviously people have drink or drugs, it, but it, it it must be a similar thing in the brain, or like a habit, or a need it, or a craving. Uh, see, I've never smoked, so I don't know, but I have met people and they say, I, I need a cigarette, I need a cigarette. I've, I've worked with men who literally can't go 10 minutes with, I need another cigarette. Yeah. And, I can't, and you're, like, watching them and you're thinking... Really? Do you know what I mean? Is the craving that bad? The only way I can describe having an addiction is like when you're thirsty and you or you're hungry and you want food or you want to drink a water, and it's your body feel your your body almost feels like it it needs that right. to be able to function, and that's what you do hear a lot of people saying. And I need a cigarette, but what I started to notice, I started to really look at the whole smoking situation and. You had, you know, something good was happening or we just had good news. I'd go outside and I'd, I'd have a cigarette. And, you know, if there was bad news, I'd go outside and I'd have a cigarette because it was bad news. Yeah. You know, if we were going yeah. out, I'd have a cigarette before. It dictated me whole day. And, and it works. Life. Sometimes women, um, well, not just women, men, they get together and outside of work and have a cigarette and talk. And that's what Elsa social. noticed. That's what Elsa noticed, like socially on another level. So, for example, even with even with my family, so like my mum my mom and my auntie, they smoke so I'd 
go out, have a cigarette, and I'd have a chat to them. I always feel like it was a bit of when they say smoke screen, it was literally a smoke screen because you'd never deal with anything head on. I'd become a little bit more vocal then as well. So I'd start yeah. saying things rather than hiding behind, do you know what? This is stressing me out. I can't deal with this. I'm just going to go and have a cigarette. You know, that's kind of how you, you yeah, cope with life. Yeah. You just kind of keep pushing it under and under. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd go out, have a cigarette, and I'd be chatting to family and people because you, you're sort of surrounding yourself with someone who's doing the same thing. They're outside having a cigarette as well. And I found that slowly my conversation stopped a little bit more with them. And the dynamics changed to the relationship. Obviously, yeah. it's still I still love yeah. them. It's my mum and my auntie, but... Yeah the dynamics of the relationship changed. I wasn't calling them the way I was. We weren't having them conversations. There was that. Which it, it, it's interesting because obviously on this platform as well, we talk a lot about like frequencies and emotions and patterns. And the thing is, so when you're changing your vibration, your frequency, like, like you know, I no longer want to smoke. What you're doing is it's changing their frequency and pattern because, oh, Rachel's no longer doing what do you know what I mean Absolutely. and this is it's like the ripple effect so people are like oh what what's she being like that for but you're not being nothing of course. all you're doing is saying of course. look I'm taking responsibility I don't want to smoke anymore yeah if you want to smoke that's great you do what you do yeah. you yeah but there's and I think sometimes people look for some of what's not there do you know what I mean like you you all you're doing is saying look I want to stop smoking yeah do you know what I mean of course um so over those 12 months was you able to be disciplined enough to completely stop or did you fall off the bandwagon or did did it was, was did yeah. stressful times there happen was, there was times like i'd be sitting i'd, I'd go round to my nans and i'd be sitting there and my mum would just put out half a cigarette and i'd just think do you know oh. what just a just a couple of couple of little goes and then eventually i just realized you know come on this is ridiculous she's a feeder you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> my mum is a feeder oh, actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear but um but yeah, it, it's kind of, it's just, I think, I think it's being aware. Yeah. I think what you have to do with anything in life is be aware, whether that's dieting, whether that's smoking, whether you're an alcoholic, it's being aware. And I know it sounds a bit of a cliche, you know, the first thing to, you know, uh, to overcoming a, a, an yeah. addiction is admitting yeah. you've got an addiction. Yeah. But it's true. And you need to kind of go, this is hard. This is really difficult. I'm, yeah. You know, it's funny, actually, because I had a dream going back a couple of months ago that I was smoking. Right. And the whole next day I felt like smoking. It was like I hadn't given oh, up. Isn't that horrible? Isn't that horrible? It's, yeah. like, it's like a test. Yeah, it is. It's like a test. It is. Oh, I, I, love, I love how the fact, obviously, this episode, we're going to go into all your bodybuilding, but the great thing about the podcast is they take these twists and there'll be a lot of people who can relate to whether it's addiction or smoking. Um, because also as well, I don't know if you've noticed this, we're at an age now or I'm at an age in my life where when yeah, I was younger... No, sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but when I was younger, everybody smoked. Oh, absolutely. Right? But now, it's you don't actually see that many people mm. smoking. I know a lot of people do these vapes these days and this kind of thing, that's a whole, you know, another thing what they'll have to deal with but um i don't tend to see many people actually smoking these no. days and the thing the thing is i like i know it sounds like really bad but you get the glamour of the smoke and i know it's not glamorous but when you refer to like the old movie stars it and, used to be you know and they'd have them you know sort of sophia loren yeah, and yeah. all that it was quite it was quite glamorous yeah whereas these vapes i can't deal with these vapes. no no and I, what worries me is when i you know on these social media platforms you keep i keep seeing these little horror stories where people's lungs are filling up with because they're taking some of what they don't they don't know do you know but anyway so that, that'll be a, a, someone else's podcast that's in the a, future that's another story but, yeah so you've decided you look you're going to quit smoking and you've also, at this point, or you might have not realised at that point, but you thought, do you know what? I have dedicated myself and I have been disciplined enough to stop smoking. Yeah. So then where does that play a role or where does the bodybuilding come in? As in, like, what was the what was the first day where you said, do you know what? I'm going to start changing my body or and become an, a bodybuilder. Well, because, because I didn't do anything for myself. Right. Okay. So I didn't do anything for myself, and that's another excuse, sort of a smoker or someone. You know, it's me. It's me. One thing that I've got. You know, I okay. like doing this. I like doing. So I didn't actually do anything for myself. I was very much sort of stay at home mom and and whatnot. So anyway, I went back to um, went back to work. I was working for a design company in Manchester at the time, 
um, I had the two boys. They were they were tiny. This is kind of like a little bit, sort of a couple of years down the line after after the quitting smoking, um, yeah. and we knew we were going to have a third child. But I'd gone back to work and and whatever, working in Manchester, and I came home one day, and that was my thing. That was the thing that I had done. I worked at that sort of social life, and then I came back from work one day, and I just seen the two boys, and I thought, you know what, I just want to be a mum to the boys. I don't, you know, I've never. I've never sort of been driven, like, yeah. career or anything like that. Um, I'm disciplined, being disciplined, which I realised after I stopped smoking. Um, but I was never driven because um, it was never put on me as a kid. It was never like, do this and you can do that and you can be whatever you want to be. And you, there was kind of like no guidance or nothing. It wasn't yeah. even a thing. I don't know whether it was for you, but it wasn't no, a thing no, in my life. No. I, I remember walking in on the day of my GCSEs and they were like, yeah, you're doing your GCSEs in the hall. It's English or whatever. And I was yeah. like, what, what? Yeah. Whereas now, you know, I know all my kids, what they're doing and when yeah. their exams are. And well, I try anyway, yeah. you know, to... No, I, I can fully agree. I think a large percentage of people um, end up in their twen- late 20s, 30s, 40s, still not knowing what they want to do in life because there was no, like, guides or foundations laid as a kid. No. You were sort of just left to sort of almost just go through the motions. Yeah. And it's almost like... Like, I remember... Um, I didn't even know where you got into college. No. And then before I knew it, all my other friends had gone to college Absolutely. and I was just left in a no, factory. exactly. I just... I didn't the know same. how to do it. I thought university was for, like... The posh ones, you know, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a thing. You know, yeah, someone's yeah. family was in university, or the brother, their older brother was in university. You knew you were in a posh yeah, house in yeah, Crosby or yeah. something. It wasn't really for for me and my life. And again, that goes back to understanding. Um, you know, you put putting yourself in a box, yes. so you kind of surround yourself with people who are doing certain things, family, friends, and lifestyles that yeah. you you're used to looking at. And you just kind of repeat that, yeah. and you repeat it generation after generation after generation. Yeah. You kind of just expect hundred percent, and that plays into so much what we're about here at Drake, Michigan. Because even without people knowing it, because I don't believe people do realise it, they are living a program of previous generations' lives. Hundred percent, and it's and it's it's not done by purpose. It just literally is. Well, this is what we do, ain't it? You don't know any difference. Exactly. You don't know no. any difference. It's like the boy who was born into wolves, yes. you know, and he's eating raw meat and capturing yeah. animals and licking himself yeah. clean, you know. You, you are can't... a product of your surroundings. Of course you? you are. Of course you are, and that's something that people do have to understand because yeah. that's that's very important. And I say that to my children all the time. I preach that. You know, because my kids don't see, they think a, a phone contract is an entitlement or having a phone is an entitlement, having money to go out is an entitlement because everybody around them has got that. And I sat my eldest down the other, the other week and said, it's it's not because you don't see outside of the world that you're living yeah, in, yeah. you know, and that's, it's, it's a good thing yeah. that you've got that comfort. But I know from the other side how far you can fall. If you if you're not determined enough and you're kind of just coasting through things, and again, you know, it's it's horrible. It's hard the sit not horrible the system. Well, it is. It's horrible the system. How you know the children go through school, and if you kind of don't fit into that category in school, you're classed as an outsider. So yes. I work with a community gym, a boxing gym, the Rydal, um, in Stanley Road in Bootle, and they do a lot of um they do a lot for the educate it's called the, the Rydal Education Programme. And kids who aren't going into school who are playing up, who are being naughty or, you know, naughty, um yeah, yeah. and they're not conforming yeah. in school. And some of them are naughty, don't get me wrong. Um but some of them are just misunderstood. Yes, and that's and yeah. that's what it is. And um, they come in and they teach them um they're in association with the college so they do like the basic skills of like reading, maths, science, that thing. So they can, you know, go on and get a GCSE. But they do a lot of um, training, like boxing training with them, which teaches them discipline. Because it's not just about education, it's having the fire to be able to go, I want to get up this morning and do this, I want that, I want that. Yeah. You can be edgy. I went to school with people who were A-star students, and they're probably not you know, in a position financially or health-wise or happiness-wise yeah. as yeah. other people that I know or myself yeah. who, who didn't come out with a GCSE. Yeah. 
you know, because it's about having that fire inside. Yeah. You can be naturally clever. Um, but yeah, I, I sit, what was, I've gone off track now. No, I I'll just, I'll just pick up there as well, because obviously these children, school, yeah. school's not for everybody. No, it's not. And do you know what? Sometimes just someone else believing in you or giving you that, like, you know, you can do this or giving you a purpose. Like whether that's the boxing or whether it's body, yeah. and that that can change someone's whole life trajectory in such a positive way. Instead of them just sort of being narrow boated down this system. Oh, you failed in school. Now you're going to end up in a factory. Now you're going to end up, obviously, I don't know, in trouble with the police. But it, we're very fickle, especially in this country like that. Aren't You've we? got to fit into it. You've got to fit into a box, and. Like some of these children that I speak to in there, I say, well, what what is it about school to now? Just don't yeah. like it. Yeah. And they're not necessarily naughty, but they're, they're kind of almost classed as naughty kids. Yeah. And people look at them like that. They're expecting something bad from them. So if someone's expecting something bad from you as a child, a lot of the time you just give that back. Yeah, definitely. You know, you give back yeah. what's co- kind of coming at you and, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, but some of the, I've said to them, you know, what about being a PT? How about being a boxing coach? I'd love to be a boxing coach, you know, just that little spark. Just giving them something. And all it is, you know, otherwise, if if we were all super academic and we were A-star students, uh, you know, at science and maths and English, then we'd have no one laying roads and we'd have no one building houses and no one yeah. making bloody glass baubles for your Christmas tree, no. you know. And also, do you know, because we know as well, the statistics are there that most people who go on to do anything in life and not normally the academic ones at school. It's normally the dropouts, the ones who don't fit in, the misfits, if you like. But they are the creative geniuses of tomorrow. Um, and now, I've, I don't know what the future will bring, but my, my daughter definitely doesn't fit in at school. She, it, it, It's weird, because she's only 15, but she finds the whole education system and the teachers boring. Yeah. She, she finds them to be, like she'll say to me, she said, Dad, the thick. They, yeah. They've got no common sense. Yeah. It's almost like they're reading everything from a textbook and making you learn everything from a textbook. But in reality, in everyday life, that doesn't really work. And she just doesn't get that. She's, she's she's like, I just don't get it. I don't want to do it. But that's the misconception with the whole society side as well because we look at teachers and we look at doctors. We look at them as, as and politicians. We put them on gods. a pedestal, don't we? God, so you can't say, you can't, you can't question what's going on in class, yeah. you know, that was that was a big thing for me. Yeah. But why are you shouting at me when she's talking? Why is it me? Get out of the class. Yeah. There's yeah. no there's no sort of mutual respect. And although I want my children to be respectful, and going back to what you said, you know, my, my son says that to me, my eldest, he says, yeah, but, you know, there's loads of people that, like Elon Musk and people like that yeah. who, who left school at, like, 30, you know, this age or whatever, and they got no results. And, and I said, yeah, but they've got, they've got a fire... There's no form. You like you can't just go. I'm not going to school because that will make me successful no. if I don't go to school, and you can't go if I go to school. It'll make me successful. There's a I, I call it a fire. Yeah. There's something there You've that got to just have that goes. Drive in. Yeah, yeah, something where you yeah. go. Okay, and also because I I feel sorry for obviously you know for kids and and we've all been there. I think definitely from the age of probably fourteen to maybe seventeen, it literally is that there's two paths that you can take now. Oh, yeah. And it's like, which path are you going to go down? Yeah. Now, if you take the wrong path, you could be in your late 20s, 30s before you get back on track. Yeah. And a lot of people end up doing that. You know, I think it's only later on in life you start thinking, where's my life gone? Where's it going? Mm-hmm. I wanted more than this. Yeah. You know, and that's why I try to drum into my kids now. It's like, look, everything you do between the age of like 14, 15, up until probably 20, this is going to determine now the next... 10, 15, 20 years of your life. Yeah. yeah. You know, but obviously kids, they know everything. They don't want to listen to you. You know, they, no. they, you know, they think they know everything, don't they? But, you know, hopefully, I keep hammering it, hopefully I'll get through to them. Yeah. Um, but listen, we've come off track a little bit because ultimately, let's get to... So you would have been in your late twenties before you've started bodybuilding or got into yeah, the yeah. So yeah. So basically, when I kind of when I decided to come out of work, as I knew I was having another baby, we knew we wanted three yeah. children and whatever. Okay. Come out of work, sold my car. You know, said we'll just go on a bike. You know, we'll just cycle with the boys on the back of the bikes and yeah. whatever. And it was great, and it was a great time. And um, anyway, when the baby was born, I started getting into um, like who's my youngest. 
I started, which she's 11 now, so I started doing a bit of home fitness. Okay. So my brother had given me, like, some weights and a bit of a, a barbell, and I started doing, like, five sets of five and this, that, and the other, and getting into that. And Never done anything before? Not really. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Yeah. I was kind of sporty in primary yeah. school, and, I, you know, I was good at athletics yeah. and stuff so like that. So was this, like, you know, like, after you've had a child, I want to get back into shape? Yeah, I, I wasn't. To... Yeah, I wasn't overweight. No, it was more. It wasn't anything to do with that. It was more. I want to do something for me. For, okay, okay. And I wanted to do something a little bit different because I was slim and and whatnot. So I wanted to do something different, and I liked the idea and the empowerment at the time. I know it's in everyone's faces now, bodybuilding, but at the time, just the empowerment of just you know a strong woman. Yeah. Because it was another world for me then. I was kind of like, this is weird. So I had to, tra- anyway, long story short, I had to train at home. I was yeah. doing burpees over like a little baby's like bouncer thing, you know, because I couldn't go to the gym. You know, I couldn't, I, I didn't have time. I yeah, had three yeah, yeah. three children under five, so it was really difficult. Anyway, just going forward like a few more years, I got involved in in a gym. I was always the teacher's pet in the gym. I loved it. Um, and, and it just made me feel so good, even though it was always hard at the time. I was just always pushing myself to the limits. Um, and and was I you doing every feeling. day to this? Was it a daily? Um, no, it was like a few times a week. A few times a week. Maybe sort of like today. three, four yeah. times a week. Yeah. Um, got in shape, got dead healthy. Um, I ended up doing um, some... And this, oh God, I can't even remember what it was called. Um, there was some internet thing... And it was this training program. I can't even remember what it was called. Beach Body, something Beach okay. Body. Yeah. And um, I used to do that. I was doing that, and I'd lost loads of weight, and I realised, you know, I'd kind of like, you know, toned up and everything else. So that's that's what else gave me the bug. So it's seeing the benefits of the hard work. It was yeah. more just for space for myself, yeah. bit a bit of mindset because when I train, I kind of just go into myself. Yeah. Um. So it was that side of it. Um, and then when I joined when I joined the gym, um, I just started meeting various people and, and, and whatnot. And then I remember going to Spain on holiday and I looked out the villa window and there was it, it was a it was called a community pool. So it's not a communal pool, it's a community. So the villa that we'd stay at, it was my sister in law's villa and she'd just say, Take the kids, you know, they weren't in school, cheap cheap holiday sort of thing. Yeah. So we'd go over, we'd stay in this gorgeous villa. Um, and we, it would just be a home from home for like a couple of weeks for us. And I remember looking out the window around the pool and I seen um, someone that I recognised, a bodybuilder. Right. And I'm looking out and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, look at these like gods and goddesses like at the sides of the pool here. There was like women with shoulders and, you know, like really sort of like, like t- abs and, and, and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So anyway, I go out and go out with the kids and all that. So anyway, long story short, the the bodybuilder um is is one of my really really close friends now. Bernie Cooper, his name is, and right. I'd seen him on a a documentary. Um, he, yeah, I, I'm not going to say old in case he listens to this. <laughs> He's an older bodybuilder, but he, he was knows doing, his stuff. Yeah, 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 and he was in great shape, and he was doing that. He was you know cutting for a competition, and I was amazed that everyone was sort of drinking, you know cocktails and he was just sitting there on holiday you know whereas we associate holiday with just yeah, junk just, yeah, and coming back yeah. six pounds heavier yeah and he was just like this god and he was like i mean bernie at the time he must have been like in his 60s and he's picking the kids up and he's like throwing them into the pool and i was like oh my god anyway weirdly enough and none of these villas, it was only us, it was only these two villas that were occupied, ours and theirs, because this golfing resort was quite new at the time, so a lot yeah. of the villas hadn't been sold off. So we got talking to them, and he was from Cumbria, um, but his partner, who was his wife now, Debbie, um, she was from Southport, so she was only down the road from me. Right, okay. And we're in Spain. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. So she was like, come and train at the gym with us. So got back, and that was it. It was like... It was like royalty. So when you trained with Bernie, you would you'd just be kind of like sloping into gyms yeah. behind him. And it was like the God has arrived. So you had you know that feeling I mean? of feeling really good. And because obviously with, with these people. Yeah. Uh, but also that would have been a, a sort of 
I don't want to use the word motivation because we'll come on to that. But the thing is, that is a, as well of it like... give me the spark. It give you the, it, it give you the, the spark. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. No, because you... And obviously, was she very toned and muscular? Yeah. Yeah. So, she uh, was into her training and she kind of... She over, was trying to overcome a few health issues like injuries and stuff like that. Okay. And I've seen that. And I've seen that side to it as well. So, sort of, you know, it's not just physically how you look. Um, it's, you know, the discipline and, under, you know how can you be that disciplined to do something like that? How can you sit at the sides of a pool without a sangria, you know? How 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 does that work? And my mind was just ticking. It was a completely different world, you know, training through injuries, training when you're not feeling well and how it has an effect on your body, phys- uh, positive effect physically and the positive mental effects that it has on your body. And just creating, it was just that community that was around me then and that was it. So it was kind of, you know... They were my people. I was yeah, like, these are my yeah, people here. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not into. I don't want to watch the Kardashians or whatever. These are my this that, that this people. is your thing. What you're into? Yeah, yeah. going with like you know, tra- dirty old trainees on and training with a an old hoodie on, and I, that was I was like, I love this. I love that. I love I love the sort of because you put off. You see, you see these bodybuilders and these big bodybuilding gyms, and they're quite intimidating. Right. And the reality is. These are the people that are going to come over and help you and welcome you into their community. These are like the old school people who do it properly and they're not, you know... Yeah, great but, teachers, probably. Uh, amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they come from a place where there wasn't really big egos and everyone was better, you know. These these are from like the golden era of bodybuilding, like, you know, or like the Arnies and stuff like yeah. that, where they train. I mean, Arnie used to train... With, with people he was competing against at that's the right, Olympia. Yeah, they just trained it. they trained yeah, together yeah, because that's yeah. what they do. They done. have great respect. Because it, it is, yeah. because it's it, there's a lot of good I don't it's a bit hit and miss now, I think, with how it goes and how yeah. it's gone. It's gone a bit weird now, if I'm honest, like the whole yeah. bodybuilding world. But there is that 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 was for me what sold it. Because yeah. these people that I was you get the odd idea, you know, floating round. But that sold it for me. It was this community and people going, Come on, you can do this. One more rep. You can, you I can't, you can, you can. And it was the first time like you'd kind of really heard that outside yeah. of your own family, you know, like Someone my husband had always you. encouraged me. Yeah, yeah. But you do because your husband's and wife and yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of what you do. My kids say, You're only saying that because I'm I'm your son. Yeah. You're only saying I'm good at that because I'm your son. You know, things, you know, or I'm your daughter. So I got that, but it was coming from a different source. Yeah. So you, you kind of listen a little bit more. I know that sounds terrible, but you kind of go, no, you okay, do, yeah. Yeah, look, yeah, I've, well, you know, that was a great session. You pushed yourself really, and you're like, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, um, kind of progressed from there. Um, I, I decided that I was kind of going to compete. I thought, I'm going to compete. I might compete. I might not compete. Um, and I never but again, that's the, there's a whole sort of thing behind that because I think, well, I'll, I'll get on to that in a minute. Yeah. So anyway, comes uh, we come to lockdown. And lockdown, it, it was making or breaking people, wasn't it? Yes. So for me, I'd kind of bod- been doing bodybuilding, but not competitive. So I was building my body in a way the years before, but not to compete or to get on stage. So anyway, lockdown, lockdown came and we're all in. And it was, to be honest, it was actually a really good time for our family because we were always passing ships and whatnot. And for us, it was a really nice time to spend to see, time yeah. together. It was really good. Um, and I, I found myself kind of sitting in the back garden. You know, I don't drink a lot, but I love a glass of red wine. Finding myself in the little double swing in the garden, you know, the sun was shining. It was like sort of May, wasn't it? It was like glorious and, oh, you know, in May... And I thought to myself, what am I doing here? You know, not not that there was an issue with, yeah. with drinking, but I thought, I, f- I feel like there's kind of, there's nothing there to, to work towards. And there was so much uncertainty yeah. for everybody. Yeah. When it come to lockdown, what was going to happen, what was going on. Oh, I might say as well, I was getting building work done on the house just before lockdown. I had half a kitchen. So... That all that went by the wayside, so it was an absolute nightmare, and it was kind of getting me back up a little bit as yeah. well. Um, and I was using like I was just having a bit of me time, but me time wasn't really benefiting me other than in the moment, chilling, having a glass of wine, cheese and crackers, or whatnot. But the reality is, 
there was not there's nothing good that's coming from that i'm just drinking more wine and eating more cheese and crackers and yeah. that was it yeah. so i felt like i just needed to put me focus on something so anyway i was on a facetime call with bernie and debbie who i was talking to to you about before um, and I just said, look, I think I'm going to compete, you know, once kind of locked down, like once it's all gone, because they live in Spain now. Yeah. And um, I said, I think I'm going to compete. And they were like, oh, well, you know, our friend Mike, you know, Mike, he runs, like, he ran a federation. I said, oh, yeah, 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 he's, you know, he, he'd be happy to train, yeah, you know. Anyway, long story short, Mike ends up training me. The kinds of restrictions keep coming and then go and lock down, yeah. then this, that, and the other. But it gave me that motivation. So I went from being quite laxy daisy going with day by day, not knowing to deciding. You know, I, I don't know what I don't know what the future holds in general, but I'm certainly in control of my life and what I can do. Yes, and I think that was the important thing. I wanted to feel like I was in control of something yeah. in my life because we are. We just don't realise it. Yeah. You know, we're kind of, you're watching the news, and I don't watch the news, but we were all hooked on the news, and, you know, here's Boris speaking about this, and speak, and you're waiting to see what they're saying you can and can't do. So yeah. I just wanted to take it into my own hands, and I thought, no one can stop me from doing that, yes. whether whether I'm competing in two years' time or whatever. Anyway, when the gyms reopened, I ended up going to a gym with, with my coach, and somebody said to me at the time... Um, Oh, I've heard you competing, heard you're going to compete, and I was being a little bit modest, you know, and I just said, uh, because I don't really like sort of putting myself out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just said, oh, well, I'm going to try, you know, because I didn't want to let myself down, yeah. you know, sort of yeah, thing, you're to be a bit humble, like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 and uh, she turned around to me and she said, oh, there's no trying, she said, you either do or you don't, she said, if you don't commit to it, you're never going to get there, right, she said, I've watched a few years. She said, you're just never going to get there. And I thought, okay. Because yeah. you could take that two ways. You could think, oh, someone's being funny. But on, the, but on the flip side, you could say, no, they're being serious. That is the truth, isn't it? Oh. If, you, if you don't commit to something and dedicate yourself to something. But again, then... it goes down to well, our perception, doesn't it? Our perception of things. If somebody says something, it's always taken as a negative. Yes. You know, oh, there's yeah. no there's no this. You know, you've got to commit. You can't just half do it. Yeah. And we all get offended so easily. That's right. Uh, you know, and we don't... I like a bit of straight yeah. talking, even if it does hurt, yeah. Because yeah. that's coming from a good place, what she's saying there, isn't it? It is, and it's just... And it's the reality, again, like, going back to the smoking thing, the reality is no one goes, it's going to be really hard smoking, uh, quitting smoking. Quitting. It's going to be really hard. No nicotine patch, no jumping up and doing 10 stars jumps is going to make this any easier yeah. it's down to you really again no one's going to come and save you you've just got to do it yourself and get on with it and that was it and you'd have to commit because you'd have to see your end goal because if you can't see the end goal then you're never going to get there when i when i graduated from university i had i actually graduated breastfeeding a, a baby at the time but for me, I remember like all my assignments had to be in and I'd always think, how the hell am I going to do it? How the hell am I going to do it? But I'd always think about my graduation day and I'd always, so going back to like manifestation without it being all like, oh, you know, it's all, yeah, yeah. It's all you know, spooky booky, you know, because people, some people think that. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's where they get the wrong idea of it because it wasn't, I was determined. I was, I had me focus on the end goal. Right. and determined to be there so it was just tough tough basically yeah. Yeah. i knew i had to get the assignments done did i stay up all night yeah did i get the best grades on them sometimes because i had crying babies no i've done it and i graduated right. but if i had if i'd have kind of had a mindset of i don't know how i'm gonna get it done i mean how can i graduate when i've got two babies you know it's yeah. a bit practically impossible it's it's, yeah. it's amazing how powerful your brain is and, and, and some people although it does sound like well, it's an excuse, and some people would play into that and they'd say, oh, yeah, I understand you did have two kids and that's why you never did it. Mm -hmm. And some people literally go through their life, don't they? they, with that excuse, that story, replaying that story. And then there's the other person who went, yeah, I have got two kids, but you know what, I'm going to do it. Well, there's two, two types of people in the world, I say to my kids. There's people who make excuses to not do stuff, and there's people who try and look for ways 
to do stuff, that's like right. excuses to do stuff. Yeah. yeah, but I can do this. And that's yeah. why you've got someone with no legs climbing Mount Everest. Exactly. You know, and then you've got someone with, you know, I don't know, a twisted it, ankle going, and I just can't get exactly. up out of bed. And you there's, know? there's a famous, I think, uh, there's a saying, and I don't know if the famous saying, but it's almost like, if you really don't want to do something, you'll find an excuse not to do it. Seek and you shall find. Is that, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, yeah. and, it, and it's so true. And yes. again, so and it, it's interesting how you bring up like sort of manifestation because it's not, it's not just woo woo and, and wishing for the stars. Yeah, real manifestation is setting your goals and your plans Definitely. and your targets, and Definitely. then as the miracles open up because little miracles do happen and you get there, and what you've done is you have manifested the life that you want. Yeah, but you never, you know, and I always say as long as you don't quit, you keep pushing forward. You're heading in the direction yeah. that you need to go. As soon as you quit, that's it. Yeah. It's, it's over. Do you know what I mean? So but you do quit. You quit. Well, not not necessarily. I don't quit. That's that's probably the best and the way. In fact, I've been told it's the best and worst trait about myself is that I just keep going and going and going. Yeah. But I think, again, if, if you knew, if I said to you, Kev, I want you to jump over this, it's going to be really difficult. You might have to sort of practice jumping for a few weeks to get over it you know it's going to be hard you're not going to jump over it first time but that's it if you tell someone the truth yeah then you've got a re- a reality and you're living in a reality which is what we don't bloody live in reality we all live in a flipping yeah. another world don't we but but if i say and then on the other hand if i say to you can you just jump over that and i know it's going to be difficult you don't know it's going to be difficult because I'm just requesting it. You jump over it and you can't get over it. You know, it becomes, you, you know, well, not, I can't get over it. I can't, I can't actually jump over that. It's too high. Yeah. It's too yeah. high. I can't get over it. That's right. You can. No, I can't. But if I turn around and I go, look, it's going to take you a month. Yeah. But you'll get over it in a month. Yeah. The chance, you know, two or three months yeah. maybe. Might even be six months. But if you keep practicing, you'll get over it. Well, you can focus on that goal, but if you put that mental barrier up straight away, I can't. Exactly. You never ever will. No, it's it's so right, and and this is where as well, like if you can break down whatever you want in your life into smaller milestones and sections, and understand and be realistic yeah. with yourself. Yeah. You will get there. I think what happens as well is we live in a world where everybody just wants the end goal straight away. Yeah. But that but it doesn't work like that. And easy. An they, easy they want route. it easy and yeah. they want it but it doesn't. Like like so for every for every bodybuilder you see getting a first, second or third place on the podium, that is so many years of hard work, dedication, giving up. You know, and it's a bit like the the iceberg theory. Yeah. You only see yeah, the tip yeah. of the iceberg, don't you? Of course. You? you know, but everything underneath the hours, the, the you know, the stuff that you missed out on, the the partying or the the drink and the food. Yeah. No one sees all that. No, no. You know, and then and then you know they all want to share in the glory of the tip of the iceberg, but they, they were never and, around. And to be honest, for me, <laughs> bodybuilding was like that. So I'd never. I'm not really out there. You wouldn't see. You wouldn't find me in a pair of shorts or crop trousers or anything like that. You know, I'm kind of like this or yeah. in a tracksuit every day. So getting on the stage was quite the the thought and the idea of getting up in, in a bikini was a little bit Okay, yeah. Oh but I couldn't think of that at yeah. the same time. So I knew what my end goal was, but I didn't overthink the end goal because I knew that overthinking it would just create anxiety, which would then impact the way I was going about it. Because if I'm focusing on something negative at the end which is my fear of getting up or being nervous in a crowd of people or not being good enough or whatever, then yeah. nothing else matters. But for me, it was mainly, it was the journey and and testing myself and testing how I could do something. You know, test. it's pushing myself to the limits and not giving up. And I think that was the biggest journey. And that's what I realised. That was just like the... That's what you'd have to do at the end, stand on the stage. And we're all there, you know, you're all, don't get me wrong, you're all there for a a, a trophy or, or yeah. something, but there's no losers in anything like that. There's no losers in any competitive sport. No, because, because you know, anyone there. who's got to that stage has 100%. been through what you've been 100%. through. So you can shoot, I do think at elite performance sports, you can only have respect for the people around you because you know they've been on a similar journey of course. to you. Um 
when you first would have started, having to be a wife, a mom, and everything what comes with that, and then trying to fit in this, that's where I can imagine a lot of people would have said, oh, there's too much, you know. Well, it and, is. And it, it's so, a lot so to... for me now, for me now, I've got no competition, like, looming up or anything like that. I've had a few injuries and whatnot, so I'm just getting back into just training and enjoying training again. But for me now, looking back... I, like, if I'd have known, I probably wouldn't have done it, really. Well, or would I? I don't know. But if I'd have known how hard it was, I'd have convinced myself, sorry, I'd have convinced myself that I didn't have that time. Yes. Because as I got yeah. right up to it, it was nearly four hours a day training. Wow. Now, I don't even have half an hour a day spare. That, it's amazing where, so this, where, did where did that this time from? come from. Because, you, because, again, because I knew I made that time because that was my goal. Yeah. That was my end goal. You know, for example, for me to go to the gym yesterday, I had a really busy day and I didn't manage to get in the gym. Yeah. But there's no... I didn't have to go to the gym, so I didn't go at 10 o'clock, you know, in the evening because I just thought, I just want to go home. You know, yeah. there's no... Nothing I'm doing at the end of this month where I need to yeah. be in a particular condition or anything like that. So for me, I think, like you say, setting that goal, whether that's weight loss, whether that's mental health, whether that's... On, on the stage, whether that's, you know, a personal best on a, on a you know, on weights, whatever that is, if you've got that goal, going back to like a manifestation, if you've got something there to look at at the other end, that's what's going to make you get through yeah. what you're doing. Because otherwise you, you do go, well, I'm just going home. Yeah. And that's fine as well. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But you need to, you need to convince yourself of something we we um obviously we recently put together the the manifestation course yeah which is for people who you know really want to delve into it but one of the th the things that we tried to get across in that is a bit like with your train it, it's a life change you do have to adapt your life and incorporate yes, you so like you said you found them four hours a day to train because you knew where you wanted to get yeah um and we often say like if you put your mind and, and dedication to anything, for the, they reckon for the period of five years, you can almost touch anything. You know, any goal you set yourself in life, if you're thoroughly, you know, in that direction for five years, you'll reach it. Um, so, and again, so when you've, you, you've, you know, you found this time for four hours a day, that's because basically you knew what you wanted. And, and uh, you know, and you've you've set your mind and intention and this is what I want now. Absolutely. And then, so then you found the time. How long, when you're training, when you first start off, is it before you start seeing changes in your body? Like, is there a point where you think, oh, I'm stronger than I used to be or my body's looking different or it's taking a different shape? Yeah, yes and no. Yes right. and no. So it's, it kind of creeps up on you slowly. So you weight training maybe sort of like five, four or five times a week. And then cardio starts creeping in. So you do like one 25-minute session a week, two 25-minute sessions a week. Then you're training seven days a week, weight training. Cardio's gone from, tw you know, this is over a period of time. Then your cardio's gone from 25 minutes a day to an hour a day. Then you've got to get in like, you know, 15,000 steps, 20,000 steps. Okay. Then you're training in the gym. To, you know two body parts or whatever twice a day so it's kind of it creeps up on you eventually so my life would consist of i'd get up of a morning probably about four o'clock in the morning and i'd sit on a spin bike and it was kind of like i'd just be sitting there i'd have my coffee and i'd put it on really heavy and i'd just be going along like breaking a sweat and i'd sit on that for about an hour an hour and 10 minutes maybe um and then i'd go to the gym and I'd do some weights, and then I'd come back, get the kids ready for school, I'd get myself ready for work, I'd go to work, then on me, um, if I was on a call, so instead of being on a call and, like, you know, sort of sitting down stationary, I'd take myself on a walk to get them steps in, or I'd walk up and down the living room to get my steps in, because steps yeah. are steps, yeah. doesn't matter yeah. whether you're outside or inside, it makes no difference. Wow. Um, and then when I'd finished work, I'd go to the gym, and there was a time actually where I went to, again, talking about if you don't do it, you're not going to do it. Yeah. You know, you've got to kind of go, I have to. There's no choice. That's what it becomes like. You've got no choice. If you want to get to where you want to be, 
you just have to do what what it is no matter you know no matter what's thrown at you or what might sort of crop up because something will always crop up there's always an excuse isn't there yes, oh i'm yes. feeling tired kids yeah. have had an argument kids are driving me up the wall you yeah. know i need to do this my house is a mess it's this it's that it's that and i was doing you know i was kind of trying to hold everything together but I, I went to the gym one night after work and I realised that I'd brought everything other than my trainers and only had a pair of uh, Doc Martens. <laughs> <laughs> I trained in a pair yeah. of Doc Martens. But again, my mindset was, so what? You know, yeah. no no matter what anyone says or thinks, that's not going to make any difference to my goal. Yeah. You know, if you know, if I if I kind of go, well, I can't go and train in Doc Martens because someone might think this, or I can't do this and I can't do that, and you just have to kind of because we overthink as well, don't we? Definitely, oh, well, I'm definitely. gonna start my diet Monday, or you That's know, I'm gonna That's I'm gonna classic. start I'm gonna start uh, training for you know the marathon, but I need these three hundred pound trainees first, and you yeah. you know, yeah. and you just think no. Just get out and do it. Just put your shorts on or put your bloody... If you've got two trousers on, just go for a run and you suit track. Like, where did we... When did we become this world where we had to have everything perfect, you know? And also trail we, running we, shoes and... We tend to put everything off thinking there's going to be a right time to do it. And it's going to make life easier. And, and Again, it comes it, back to this it easy never, thing. It, it never happens. There's never a right time to start straight away. You know, in whatever you're doing. So, I, 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 just quickly coming off, because I saw something the other day, I don't know if you saw it, there was um, this beautiful young lady, she was only 32, she must have been on a American X Factor. Yeah. And she come on and she was singing, and she ended up getting the golden buzzer, but she would, she knew she was not going to be alive by the time the final come round. Oh, God. She was already dying. And um, it was really emotional to watch, but what, what her story was, if you wait... Until you're happy to do anything, it'll never come. Absolutely. And she said, "You've got to, you've got to do whatever you want in life now, and yeah. the rest will come after." Yeah. You know. And I just, and it, I, I had tears going down. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and 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 she keeps popping up, and and I just thought, wow. You know, she yeah. knew full well she was dying, but she she recorded this song. She lived out a thing, got the golden buzzer, and I just, it was just like, but it was the, it was the story in what she was saying. Stop putting stuff off in your life. There's never going to be a right time. Yeah. There's never a right time to have kids. There's never a right time to buy a house. There's never yeah. a right, you know, and a bit like with exercise and getting yourself into shape, there's never going to be a perfect time to but start. But again, I know, like, obviously she's obviously ill and she's got a terminal illness and she's been given a, an amount of time or whatever. But all of us, essentially, we're, we're dying or we're living you know, she's either living for three months. You know, none of us know when, you know, it the majority of us don't know when our time's going to gonna come to an end. We all think it's going to be forever, don't we? We do, but we don't know whether it's going to be next week. So there's a there's an element of that, isn't there? You know, you, are you going to live your life or are you going to die your life? You know, and that's, that's it, yeah. isn't it? Because we, yeah. it's the glass half empty, half full kind of scenario. Oh, it's your whole oh, outlook. And again, so because we always say is, are you living a life that's happening to you? Or are you making life happen? Well, now, that was like me with the with the COVID. Exactly. You summited summited triggered you, and it might have been as far back as quitting smoking. And you've said, "What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna take control of my life." I was living the life everyone else was, and that was like that's my worst fear of just being like everybody else and yes. just going through the motions and yeah. everything else. And I just thought. I need to take control here yeah. because again we are all in control see you'll get people who go well, we can't do this and the government to this or you this is happening and that's happening and i always say knowledge is power and all these things are happening it depends on what angle you're coming at whether you're coming at it from conspiracy theory or whatever yeah. you know there are corrupt things happening and you know there are there is corruption in the pharmaceutical companies and it's a business and so is the GP, so is the hospitals and all this, but there's there's good that comes in that as well. That's right. It's not all bad, but we live with this sort of fear. And and again, you're not living your life. And again, that sounds like a cliche, you know, we're living in fear and it holds us back. But we do, we, th we expect everything to be easy. We, you know... We expect everything to just be as it is around us. We don't feel like we can change yeah. what we're doing. 
you know, uh, you know, that's why it's such a surprise if, you know, someone becomes like a doctor who's come from, you know, a, a really poor family living in, you know, a really, you know, in social housing estates or something like that. But he'd become like, a, you know, a top surgeon. And that's why we love stories like that, because it's yeah. it's not heard of. It's an unbelievable success story. But why? Why it, for it one person really. and not another? <laughs> we, we, we're never told. That's yeah. what you can do. Yeah. You don't have to continue doing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And it is, this, and we're also told that everything's about money. Yeah. You know, we say to our kids, you want to get good grades and you want to do this and you want to do that and you want to do that. And it's different for everybody. Yeah. You know, I know I say that to my kids because I know that that's the path that they kind of want to go on. They've got no idea. But if one of them turned around tomorrow and said, this is what I want to do, this is my plan, this is my focus, yeah. would I be so bothered about their grades? Probably not as much. Yeah. But again, it's a fine line with with teenagers, especially, of yeah, not wanting is. to do something because they can't be bothered, and you know, yeah. having a bit of fire behind them. Yeah, and 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 I I can relate a little bit to this in my own life at the moment because I've done I've been on both sides of the fence where I've gone down certain paths what has created money and give me one one essence of lifestyle. Yeah, but I've not found any happiness there. Yeah. So then now I've gone in a different direction where I'm trying to live a life from my heart instead of my head. Now, what can happen then is suddenly like, oh, this is not good to plan from a, like maybe a financial point of view, like from a hardship point of view. But the thing is, I'm happier. And, and so it's like, no, so no, and I suppose that's where the saying comes from. If you actually do something that you love or that you're happy, you'll never work a day in your life. Absolutely. Because so the, the key to life really is trying to turn your hobby or your love into an income to sustain you. Because ultimately, if, if I if I was able to create an income of what just covers all the bills, keeps everyone um, knocking from your door kind of thing, mo most people would probably be happy there anyway. Yeah. And then if it escalated onto anything else, fantastic. Yeah. But to be honest, I think once you get to that level where, look, I've now turned a passion into something. So a bit like with the bodybuilding, I mean, if that was um, your main focus, I don't know if there is any money involved in bodybuilding, but if you were turning something you loved and then that was paying for your life, that would be fantastic. That's the it? thing with bodybuilding, you, you kind of... It costs you money. It does it. It costs you money. So right. you'll find that bodybuilders sort of they've either got loads of money or no money because it just takes from it just takes yeah. from you. Um a lot of them are PTs as well, which is kind of you know, yeah. they find themselves in the gym. That's why I hate this whole, you know, social media um mindset of like young kids and and I'm not kind of, you know, being ageist or whatever, but, you know, you, you'll see, like, the young ones going, I'm here, what's your excuse? And I think, well, two dogs, three kids. Yeah, they've not lived business. that life, but yeah. You know, I do, I'm not a PT, I'm not, I haven't got access to a gym all the time. Yeah. Like I say, when I trained in my Doc Martens, it was either training my Doc Martens or I spend 15 minutes going home, then probably by the time I get in and someone asks me for something, I'm back again and I'm doing this again. You know, so it, it adds like another hour to me day that yeah. I haven't got to give. Yeah. So I, I think I think you do have to grab them opportunities where you can. And I think we all need to understand that we've all got a different lifestyle. We're, we're all, we've all got different commitments in life and it doesn't make yeah. one person better than another. Another yeah. conversation I had with my son, you know, a lot of people talk about kids' mental health now, and we, we almost, we joke about it and go, oh, well, the kids of the 80s, you know, we, we didn't do that. We just got smacked. I mean, I remember running in kind of like, you know, <laughs> to, to try and avoid yeah, me yeah. ass getting whack because, you, you know, yeah, you said yeah. something cheeky or whatever. And they say, oh, you know, we just, we kind of, you know, beat around the bush with the kids now and we're always asking how they are and how this is. But what we also, it does, we almost make us, we make, these kids are today and young generations feel inadequate. Yeah. And the reality is, the reality actually is different now. You know, in the 80s, my dad went out to work and my mum stayed at home. Yeah. You know, it was kind of, your income was relative to what you were spending out. You know, people weren't spending on electricity bills 10 times what they were earning in a month. You know, it wasn't a thing then. Yeah. 
So there's a lot more pressure on the kids now. The work's harder. There's a lot more pressure on them to... A lot of competition to find There is. There is. And, like, again, like clothes-wise, me and my friends, we'd go out and we'd always wear the same thing. We'd all have the same thing on. There wasn't, like, you'd wear something different on a Friday to a Sunday. You'd only had, like, a select amount of outfits. Yeah. But, again, that wasn't because we're better than the kids now. You know, my kids have got amazing clothes and amazing shoes and they, they always look incredible and it doesn't mean that they're not as good or as robust as what we are it's just the world's different we didn't have the likes we didn't have accessible fashion you know so the world changes and that's something else that we kind of don't adapt to you know we kind of we put other generations down and put ourselves as like a, as, as a priority yeah. but i think we all have to look at circumstances you know lifestyle how we grew up what our life is like, you know, why aren't you in the gym now? There's people who are going, well, because I'm a, I'm caring for a parent or a sick child or, yeah. you know, so all that kind of, you know, remember when Molly May said, um, every, do you know Molly May? I've heard of it. So she's been... going out with the, um, she's off Love Island, I think. Right. And, and, I knew it ring the bell from yeah, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she kind of got um, slated, but then there was a lot of people like really bigging her up as well um, for saying she's just a young girl and she's she's become like um quite high up in um a fashion brand a uh, pretty little thing it's called okay yeah and she's become quite high up in that but it's only because of a media presence you yeah. know I assume I'm not saying the girl doesn't work hard because I don't know her life or yeah. anything like that yeah. but she turned around and said everyone's got the same twenty four hours a, a, in a day you know if I can do it. Uh, yeah, you can, and it's like the wrong it way, that really country. did because it yeah. is, and and that's yeah. what we've got to take into consideration. You know, a young person kind of putting out on social media, you know, if I can do this, you can't do that. It's coming, it's come. You've got to understand from their perspective, but other people need to understand from yeah. your perspective. I'm not going home getting my underwear washed by my mum and dad, getting the bills paid. Exactly. You know, exactly. I've only earned, you know. One PT I do, a I day. Do, I do find though as well. So like they they might have made that comment. Let's say she's in her early twenties or something like that. Um, and you know for a fact when they're in their early thirties, they will have a completely different look at life. When they're in the forties, it'll be another look at life. Of course. And that's probably been the same because I always I, I always remember like we always say like you know when we have our grandparents mm -hmm. and they'll be like, I bet they're glad they've died if you like because they wouldn't fit in with what. No. They wouldn't believe what the world's like no, today. No. And and I've said this to myself to my own partner is like, do you know what? The world has changed because I do think it's getting faster. By the way, I do think from the where the world was when we were twenty to in our forties, well, that is. Oh yeah. Do you know? And I'm thinking at this pace, by the time I'm in my seventies and eighties, it's just not going to be recognisable. Mm -hmm. And I and I often joke as well. I can understand where some older people think I don't fit in with this world anymore. Yeah. You know because. Yeah. You know that that's just, but but I think we have to sort of respect each generation, but also they have to acknowledge we've come from a diff different generation. Yeah, um, and especially as well because our generation, which was um, this one coming through, is it called Generation X? Is oh, it, I'm, so not too I, sure, I'm not sure. Annie. Anyway, but I know for a fact our generation was the last of the old world, so we our generation remembered what it was like before computers before the phone yeah. before the technology yeah, yeah. and uh, well, i've spoke about this a bit so we're still clinging on to look we remember what it was like we lived through these times whereas what the the kids today and the generations today are living through is completely different but, it's a, it's a re but, but what we do is we put ourselves on a pedestal i think right. and we you know like like almost like your nano granddad would and they go you know i live through the war <laughs> And I remember running out of the air raid shelter yeah, because my yeah. sister was pregnant and there was bombs and the yeah. I, I just waited to hear the bomb because then I knew I was still alive if I heard the bomb drop and that kind of thing. And it's an interesting story and it's interesting to acknowledge the past. But when we're talking about the 80s, well, what well, we done this and yeah. we done that and we didn't care, you know, because like, but you, like you say, life wasn't as fast paced. So as a child, we didn't really have... The, the worries, even though my children have probably got, uh, well, not probably, they've got a, a well more stable, like financially stable um, home life and, and just a more, you know, stable home life, really. Um, it doesn't mean, I, I kind of automatically think that 
they should be grateful for that yeah. and they should be grateful for what they've got and grateful that they've got parents who aren't having murder and you know yeah. they're not they're not smacked or hit or you know verbally or physically abused like you know they should be grateful but I think sometimes we just need to leave our stuff in the past because we lived a completely different life we were living a life of we just go out into the streets we didn't really think about that there was no pressure for anything you know my kids talk about these things on the phone like streaks where they have to send these messages so if I take the phones off then they're freaking out yeah. Because there's no, it there the people's anxieties and phobias have been have been like highlighted even more now, haven't they? Because there's like, more the, to yeah, worry about. Because there's, there's, there's no hands on. So I say this about the school. Like I remember going into reception in school. I remember my mum taking me in, and I was screaming, crying. Everyone's been through it with the kids. They don't want to go in on a particular day. Screaming, crying, and the teacher picks me up, puts me on a knee, and all the children were sitting on the mat. And she sits on me as she sits me on her knee and starts reading the class a story and that was it. And I get into the story and the teacher's cuddling me. That doesn't happen. That's not allowed anymore. You know, it's it's the formalities of how we've made the world as well. We've made yeah. the world so formal that we've just become we're, we're moving further and further away from humanism and and reality yes no there's no right. human thing you know it's like no. well i don't care if you're sick i want the job done and we all have that sort of mindset i don't care if someone's friends and this that and the other or the yeah. tenant isn't paying the rent because a mate's done this and gone here and gone there or dad you know and it's all these things and we 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 take away that that heart and soul of yeah. of what we did have but that but again that's that's just created by the system and yeah. again, acknowledge the system, but create your own world. We do yeah. have to have formalities. We, I was speaking to a, a doctor, uh, an A and E doctor, uh, from the gym actually, from the Rydal gym, and he was saying we're talking about school and whatever because some of the kids were in there, and he said school wasn't for me. Now his his sister's like a, a neurosurgeon, and they just didn't go to school. They got their own qualifications and sat the GCSEs and whatever, but they just studied themselves because they just weren't interested in what that brought. And um he was saying, he said, we were talking about, like, what's wrong with the system, as we do. We always moan about the system that's, you know, no one's actually responsible for, but it's yeah. there. And he said, he said, you're right, though. He said, you know, kids, uh, someone someone drops to the floor bleeding in in the hospital. He said, the first thing you do is you have to go through, like, your checklist. He said, there's no... There's none of that, like, sort of hands-on. It's everyone's got to be so careful in case they upset someone. You know, whatever happened to, you know, they were doing, trying to resuscitate. Just trying to save like, so, Yeah, <laughs> and that's why they've cracked the ribs, yeah. you know. But instead, it's like, oh, no, yeah. my my uncle Frank was, his ribs were cracked when they were trying yeah. to resuscitate him, and he's now, we're going to have to bury him with cracked ribs, you know, or, you know, he's, he's alive, but he's got cracked ribs, and it's causing him pain. We're just so removed from that. I know. Isn't it? Isn't it just it's bizarre? A, I, I, I even and that's what stresses the kids yeah. out. I think that's what causes yeah. the kids to be like yeah. that yeah. because it's just formal. Everything's formal. I saw something um, not so long back, and somebody was suing someone because they saved their life. Oh, yeah, they were trying so. to commit suicide, and someone saved that doesn't them. Doesn't surprise me. And, and you're just like, then for me, that is you. Can't, that's the world gone bonkers now. It's like, well, it is. What is? You know, because we've lost control. Because yeah. we don't, we haven't lost. Well, we have. We've lost control because we don't realise that we've actually got control. Okay, we can't. We can't change the fact that the energy bills have gone up, and we can't change the fact that you know, food is you know over processed, and we can't. But if we know, yeah. then we can change our attitudes. Which in, 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 in this way, it comes down to the individual. I think so. And I think what's lost control is I think the system, whichever that is, that's lost control. They've run out of whatever maybe yeah. maybe like capitalism is always it's always been built on boom and bust and yeah. it has it's amazing it has it's amazing place in the world capitalism um and we, we you know we could go into all that but the bottom line is the flip side of capitalism is it's always going to b- burst at some point yeah and i do think we are on the pinnacle of that you know it's it's literally like it's got nowhere else to go so yeah. it's a now there has to be a breakdown um but besides that People individually can can take control of their lives. Hundred percent. You know, no nobody nobody said to you, you can't go to the gym, you can't become a bodybuilder. You, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you have got free will. You did decide 
that's what I want to do. And you know what? Then that in itself is an inspiration to whether it's your kids or whether it's someone else watching you, someone who's two years behind you. They might say, well, Ra- Rachel, she, she's got three kids. She's got a job. She, goes to, she does the, the bodybuilding. Well, if Rachel can do it, I can do it. She's just a normal person. Yeah. And, and, and I think, so we can be inspirations to people like that as well. Um, but just coming back to the bodybuilding. So did you have to change like you, you, everything that you ate? Everything that I ate, I had to count. I had to count calorie. I didn't count calorie. Oh, sorry, I did. I counted calories. I counted my macros, which is your protein, your fat, your carbs, and I'd alternate it to try and keep my metabolism. I got to. I actually got to a point. Again, that kind of creeps up. So it's not all at once. Yeah. You know, it's little bits, little bits added, and then a little bit more cardio, and a little bit reduction of your of your calories, and then a bit more cardio. And I got to a point where like sort of pre-competition, I was like eight hundred calories a day, four hours right. a day train. When I say four hours training, and probably an hour of that was like a good paced walk, but still, you know, a, a big chunk out of your day. Um, but again, it's that sometimes you know you've got to you've got to have an acknowledgement that things are going to be hard because and and it just and, and again. It, it shows you how there's always an excuse to eat or always an excuse yeah. to drink. And I never, ever come across so many get-togethers, um, parties. They're all the same as they are every year, but it yeah. just, I didn't realise all of these things were happening yeah. because I'd become more present in what I was doing. Because yeah. I was going to a party and I'm like, well, it's everyone's drinking and, you know, being merry and having cake and... I've got, you know, corn fillets in a, in a little Tupperware. And but if you didn't keep to that discipline, that could have really s- took you off track. But, but and, exactly. You know, and, and listen, there's no worse than peer pressure where everyone else is saying, oh, just have That's one. That's the evidence. Yeah. That's and, the and you're like, they, it would, if they realised how much dedication and effort you're making to try yeah. and do what you're doing, they should have a little bit more respect, really, wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? But the thing is, it's their excuse, is that? It's like, of course it is. You know of course I mean? it is, and they do just because. And again, just because someone doesn't have an understanding of something doesn't make it right or wrong for you. But again, if I'm eating, if I've got these, you know, specific meals, five or six of these specific meals every single day, and then I go to the party on Saturday, and it's just just one, just just one drink. Okay, I'll have one drink. Yeah. There's a, there's a hundred calories banked. Yeah. For just one drink, and then sort of the following week, it's like, okay, why don't you just have a bit? Okay, there's four hundred calories banked yeah. with a piece of cake. Or your partner you know, saying, "Let's have one, a takeaway." Just one, just one little sweet, or just one, all these just one littles. You, you know, again, it's choose your hard, isn't it? Yeah. So, what, what was my hard going to be at that point? And it, it changes every time, or all the time in life, doesn't it? Things change up and swap around. But did I want to get to show day? and not be in the condition I was in yeah. because I decided that it was too hard to really, you know, yeah. religiously stick to that. Was my heart going to be standing up there and going, oh, God, I'm carrying way too much body fat, I'm not in condition, yeah. I'm not where I want to be? Or is the heart just going, no thanks, no cake? That moment will pass. Exactly. That moment of difficulty exactly. will always pass, and no matter is, what in life. Because if you got to the end, let's say, you know, I'm just using first, second and third as an example... But let's say you've you finished um, second instead of first. Yeah. But you look, you could look yourself in the mirror and say, "If I never had that drink that night at that party, if I never had that piece of cake, that could be me on first now." Absolutely. So and that, so you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you can say, "I know why I'm not at first place." You do. And and you know you know as well that person who is stood in first place will say. They never had that glass of wine and they never had that piece of cake. Absolutely. They, and that's where the respect comes from. It, it is. And I think, again, it goes back to the, the source of the willpower. People go, you've got the willpower. You've got the willpower to do this. Yeah. And that's not true because I've got no willpower. I've just got discipline. Discipline. And, and that's a, a massive mistake that people make. They get that mixed up. This, it's not willpower. I don't wake up and go, oh, I can't wait to train for four hours and eat 800 calories. I that That is me. That's how I was built in this life. It's hard as hell. Like, I was crawling up the stairs at some point. My daughter was saying, you know, I, I became removed from my family because my daughter wanted me to sit down and 
watch the TV, but I just wanted a cup of tea with milk in, but I had my calories, so it was tough. So I didn't want to... Yeah. I, I wouldn't enjoy it. So there was things like that that I was putting to one side. Yeah. And they knew it was temporary, you know. Yeah. They knew it wasn't going on forever. Um, but at the same time, y- you have got to sort of... You, you have got to understand that you when you're going through phases in your life, whether that's sm- quitting smoking, quitting drinking, dieting, bodybuilding, run, whatever it is that you want to do, work, setting up a business... There's going to be difficult things and sacrifices you're going to have to make, yeah. and and that's what people need to understand. Yeah. We need to understand that hard things aren't always yeah. bad. Difficulties too, aren't bad. Too many people, and I've seen this firsthand. Too many people want the pleasure without the pain, and the reality is, to get to the pleasure, there's pain. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's, that, but but you grow. But when you're growing up, it's like okay, here's your GCSE result. We're, we're taught that here's your SAT result. So you're only good enough to go and set when you go into high school. Set this for that. You can do lower lower set maths and higher set English yeah. because you you're categorized. Yeah. You know, and you could be phenomenal. At, you know, I don't know flipping. I know you could be great at woodwork or, or, or art. Yeah, what, whatever then, it is. And yeah. then you're held back by this set of... Yeah. And, and it's a, that battle. Yeah. Can I just come back to the food side of things? So obviously you would have been um, you counting your calories and all that. Kind of, yeah. Did you... Because you knew how good it was making you feel and also learning... You would have learned about foods. Yeah. You know, what's good for you, what's not. Did you try to implement that onto the children and your partner or did you say, look, this is my thing, I'm not no. going to... It was very, it's very isolated. Is it? Yeah, you're very lonely on that journey. Right. Very lonely because, you, you, like I, I did, like don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm human. I'm not like, you know, you look at people and think that these different people, like superhumans, and it's not because you're human and you do want to have that drink or eat that cake or eat them chips or have a sandwich or whatever it is or even just have another little spoonful of rice. Yeah. You know, in, in my case. But you know that... <laughs> That's that's not how you're gonna uh, achieve that, and and I'll moan, and I'd moan about it, and I'd say to me, "Code, this is, I'm really tired of this. This isn't working." And I was almost again, even though I, I know I've got the knowledge that this is gonna be hard, because I'm I'm living it, and I've you know I've looked up at other people who've you know gone through this journey, so I know it's hard. But there was that element where I wanted them to come up with a magic solution and go, well, it's okay, actually. Yeah, You're yeah. still going to lose weight. You can just have that. You can just yeah, eat what you yeah. want. You're still going to do this. But it was not. And it was that kind of reality again. Then that was another little reality hit in my life that taught me a big thing. No one's going to save you. No one's going to come in and take your calories out of your body that you've just ate. It's yeah. just, it's just it you, is isn't it? just you. Yeah. It's you. You I decide know. what you do. You, you have to learn. To be to be accountable yeah. for everything you do. Do, do you know? Do you know? Thing who was called as well because, you know, we come into this world, like alone, if you like. Yeah. We leave this world alone, but ultimately, th- through this journey, you know, we, we have people, families, and and everything in our. But ultimately, anything you want to achieve in life, in this life, it is you. It is the person. Yeah. Nobody's doing it for you. No. Whoever that's the weight loss, climbing a mountain, no. swimming the channel. No. It is down to you. And I think far too often the excuse by P what people make is they well, they're looking for some excuse or blaming others. It is down to the person. Listen, I sit here now knowing, look, I want to lose weight. No one is gonna lose the weight for me. That's it. It's just me. But but not I know you, you you're saying that because you get it, but you'd be surprised how many people don't actually realise that they'll say it and they acknowledge it but they don't realise that because they think that Slimmer's World or Weight Watchers will do it for them Yeah, you know it's like you know I was speaking to a friend the other day and he's kind of gone through his own little journey and and whatever and I remember at the time he was talking about he'd he'd become involved in certain little things that had you know helped him get through it and I was a little bit um, I'm not going to say it because it's a little bit controversial but I, I was a little bit, I'm not into that kind of all, you know, what he's doing and he's speaking to people and he's, he's thinking that this person's made him feel better because ultimately it's him that's yeah. getting himself up every morning. It's him that's doing what he needs to do. No one's making him do that. And that's why I hate all this guru thing of, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, is is it going to... And it's not like that. It's not like that because you can have help coming in and people who can support you. Yeah. And you need to recognise that and embrace that. But no one can do it for you. If you don't want to get out of bed of a morning, you're not getting out no, of bed. No. Nobody is going to no. do that for you. Same conversation with my son over his GCSEs. He said to me, um, nothing you do is going to help me. He said, you know, it's down to me at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what you do. I said, well, actually it does. I said, you are right. You are accountable for everything that happens. But surrounding yourself, having the right surroundings and the right, you know, environment. Yeah will definitely make or break you. So if you're hanging around with toxic that's, people, yeah, that's yeah, going to break yeah, you. Yeah. If, you know, I said, if me and dad were arguing or getting divorced, or I was an alcoholic, or yeah. there was anything going on, you wouldn't be able to focus on what you're focusing on. That's right. So that's another thing. So you do have to take all these different elements into uh, people's lives, but that ultimately, that's any of those elements, as difficult as they are, are not an excuse for the for the individual not to accomplish what they want to do is it absolutely it, it, it is you know i mean how many people have come through unbelievable um circumstances tragedy or overcome difficulties and still achieve what they want to do against all the odds but it's putting yourself in the right environment yeah as well isn't it so it's you're accountable for yourself but you're putting yourself in the right environment so if my son was hanging around with you know, a, a gang of kids on the streets who were, you know, drug users or whatever, the chances are he probably would be doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. He's not going to be going, oh, no, you all do it, but I'm not going to do it. That's why you find groups of kids who That's are right. goths and, you know, football players and, yeah. you know, kind of like an but old... the same with yourself. So if you want to surround yourself with the likes of this Debbie and this gentleman who you said, um, and you say, so if, if part of you was going to the gym and doing the exercise, but then going meeting up with your friends who were all in the pub, it's not going to work, is it's it? It's not. So, but that again is, you've got to be clever enough or wise enough to take on board that and realise, look, you know, who I surround myself by and what I surround myself with and yeah. what I put into my body, yeah. eating-wise. These are all elements what make you grow. Um, so what I was going to say was as well, a bit like, there's an old saying, um, you know, a tradesman or whatever is only as good as his tools. Yeah. Uh, but even that's a bit wrong because... You could give me the best tools in the world, but that's not going to make me a good electrician or a good joiner no. or a good. It, it's the individual learning the craft, learning how to Definitely. use the tools properly. But, that, but again, that that's all these little sayings, isn't it? Of that 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 we you we always look for an excuse as humans. We just look for we just cling on to things that are just going to make things a bit easier for us. You know, I can't do because I'm pregnant, or I can't do that, and I can't do this. But we have to look at the, the reality of it. I hang pictures on our wall and sometimes it'll be kind of with the heel of a shoe and just a little nail that I've yeah, found. Yeah. Whereas my husband will put a spirit level on it. That's and right. he bring and the pictures that I've hung are exactly the same. And I've just kind of stepped back <laughs> and and it really does his head and it winds him up. He he calls me spirit level eyes. But it, but I just think Again, he'll say, I'll bring I'll bring some tools back or I'll get some tools out the garage and I yeah. just think, I'm just going to get it done. If it's not done now, I'll never do it. Yeah. So it's it's kind of just yeah. taking, it's taking opportunities, going to the gym and your Doc Martens, you know, take, taking that opportunity, hammering a nail in with the yeah. bloody, the heel of a boot. You know, it's that kind of thing that you need to do because all these old sayings just give you excuses. That's why you want to, Three hundred pound pair of trainees to run a marathon, you know, or yeah. okay, just it's gonna, it can they? make your life easier. Don't get me wrong, yeah. you know, going the gym in in a pair of nice trainers is probably a lot more comfortable, but it's not necessary to achieve something. We all we overthink everything. Yeah. We overthink. Some of the best football players in the world come from like places like Brazil, and they've got nothing, and they've played football in the, bare, the, feet the bare feet with, yeah. with stones, yeah. you know, and yeah. you just think, what, what the hell? Yeah. No, they didn't have like the best equipment or well, the best I think this. If you if you could take certain people who have who have come from nothing and achieved everything, it really then does showcase people that you can't have excuses. There's there's very few excuses in life unless you've been unfortunate enough and born with like you know um, a, a terminal disease or disability. Yeah. You know, yeah. but in in general, there's very few excuses for people in life to not do anything. Um, what I want to do is just come back to the body the bodybuilding. So obviously. When you've got to um, 
I want to get further down the line to the competition side and everything, okay. right? So obviously, because I I've seen these little videos. I watched a couple of the last few nights to, to, because I knew you were coming in, and um, and they're putting all the oil on the body, yeah. and um, they're doing the makeup and the shaving. Yeah. And, uh, so did yeah. you did you have to do all that? Yeah. So so again, from someone who's who's modest, you know, uh, you know. And quite sort of, um, yeah, I'll dress mods, you know, I won't kind of, I'll cover up when I dress and stuff like that. It was, it totally changed everything and the whole concept behind it. Like I'd be in a gym and I'd be doing a check-in and it'd be a full gym and you'd just be stripping off and you just had to be... Do you feel insecure and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. 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 You feel, you feel, yeah, of course you do. You feel insecure, but again... It's it's just a small little glitch coming in from the side that could either make or break you. Yeah. Because if I went to be too insecure to do that, I'd never have got on the stage. I'd have never have done the check-ins. I'd have never gone, oh, do you know what? But you get to a point where you're like, I'm not bothered. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, I, I do feel insecure, but I'm not bothered that I yeah. feel like that. Not yeah. not bothered, oh, I'm great. I'll prance yeah. around in my underwear in the gym all day because yeah. that's not true. I'd yeah. never do that. But... It's just a di- you, you take a little bit of a different perception. You know when people say get comfortable with being uncomfortable? Yeah. I think that's 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 quite important. That yeah. and that's something that I learnt on my journey and post show I learnt as well. Yeah. Um but I think that's the that's the again, these little things will take your focus off your goal. Yeah. And and that's something that you can't do. Because as soon as you stop thinking about your goal and start thinking about, oh, what are people going to say, you yeah, know, if they see me with knickers yeah. or what? And do you know what? My coach would be like, and you, you're talking about a world here that if you're not confident, it's really difficult to be in because you get told that you're carrying too much fat on your, your arse or, you know, yeah. on your stomach or your back's carrying too much fat. And again, that's relative to, you're not fat, but it's relative to, to, to what to, to what that, you're doing, yeah. yeah. So again, it shows you it, that's you're putting yourself in a different world again. You know, you're fat in that world, but you're not actually fat in the real world. You didn't. Yeah. And incredible. ultimately, as well, that little bubble of world that you're in, the rest of the world's going by doesn't even know nothing about it. But yeah. you know, they've probably never. No. Some people might never have even come across bodybuilding. I mean, it's probably been made more famous because of the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I mean, he comes to mind as the main. Yeah. The one. Yeah. Um, and we have like the world's strongest man and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, but you know when they do like the oil and everything. Yeah. Right. Is there a reason for that? Does it show the muscles more or something? Yeah. Or does it look so, better on camera? Or, yeah. Or? So yeah, it just shows your muscles more. Is that, it is that defines what it is? muscles and then the, the, it's called the oil. It's called show shine. <laughs> is I it? was speaking to someone in the gym about that. I said oh, I've got to. They're doing a competition in a couple of months. I was like, I've got some show shine in ours. <laughs> so it just kind of highlights. It'll highlight certain things, so you kind of put it down like on your thigh or on the top of your shoulders or for the women on the bum cheeks. You know, it just kind of highlights like different right. things on your okay. body. But I had to go through a, like a practice run of diet and diet because what you do is you actually dehydrate your body before. Right. So before you go on the stage, so you've got your diet and, and then you have to, so when you see them on stage, they're kind of like, looks like they've been shrink wrapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the skin's tight around the muscles and that's yeah. dehydration. So your body has to go through a process where you you end up getting up to about, I I was up to about 10 litres of water a day. And what that does is it kicks off a hormone, which makes you go to the toilet for a wee all the time. So you're constantly weighing, 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 weighing fluids. And then you start, as it gets closer to the show, the week, I think it's the 10 days before it is actually, you start cutting your water slowly. And when I say your water, I mean all liquid. So milk and your porridge, Anything like that, you're yeah. having to be, you know, your coffee of the morning, not just water, all liquid has to be cut down to eventually the last day where you have, uh, so the, the hormone's still kicking in. So you're having kind of like 500 ml of water or liquid, which is so difficult to do, by the way. Um, and you're so, you know, you're, you're really dehydrated and you, you're really thirsty. And your body's still going to the toilet as it was. Yeah. So you kind of weighing out more than, than you, you're taking you in. Take, yeah. yeah, than what you're taking in. Um and then the following day you dehyd you that dehydrated and then you start you have a little bit of coffee, then you start putting a little bit of carbs into your system. 
and then you start pump that you see them all like eating jelly sweets and they start yeah. pumping up because yeah. that's pushing the carbs and everything into your muscles so okay. you're dehydrated your skin's like crepe yeah. paper yeah. it's horrible um and then every time you go to the toilet on show day whatever you weigh out you're actually <laughs> you're weighing into a jug so i was weighing into a jug and measuring Whatever comes out, yeah. I can only replace half with a liquid. <laughs> so you kind of it's honestly it's an, it's insane what you put your body through, and it's it's your body's essentially shutting down. I've I've heard something very similar, and not to this extent, but I've heard of ac- actors who do it. Okay. Um, you know, like when they're getting ready for a role in a film, yeah. or like what's his name, uh, the fellow who did um, uh, Wolverine. Uh, oh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. whenever he apparently, and it's like, a, like it can be quite dangerous as yeah, well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, but but it, again, he did this dehydrating thing, and it's so when they go on the film set, the muscles are literally, yeah, literally burst. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Just moving on from that, so you know, the, there must be judges. Yeah. How do they judge? Is it is it because of the size of the muscle? Is it just the way you look? Is it personal preference? So it's your, it's your category. So it, it's a, it's subjective, isn't it? Yeah. It is subjective, and you have different federations which require or will look for different things. Then you've got your different categories. So you've got bikini, then you've got bikini toned, um, and then it can be like athletic, and then you've got oh, like physique know. athletes. So that's where you'll see the women who are like who you know. I don't like saying it, but you know, a, a more like um, a male physique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, sort of like really muscly. Um, but I was so because I was natural. I'd done a natural competition as toned, which is a category up from bikini. But in the because believe it or not, bikini at bikini level, there's still a lot of people not natural. So I, if I went into toned, they're a lot more muscular. Yeah. Than what I was. Um, so yeah, there's different categories and they'll look for different things. So usually in bikini, it'll be kind of like a cinched waist, good glutes, um, whereas toned, it's a little bit more, you know, bigger shoulders, more capped shoulders, like at the side. Um, and then your physique, it's more like, you know, big chest, big lats, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it's, but it is still subjective, and and it it can be a little bit controversial because you know obviously people know people and yeah. judges know who's coming through and whatever so yeah. it's probably not as much as what it used to be bodybuilding yeah. I think it's, something's changed and there's a lot of people who've left the industry who said it it has changed you no know, yeah. the bikini category for me now to go into bikini I'd have to probably go into natural competitions because some of the bikini girls now are a lot more muscular. Yeah. Um, and masculine in, in how they look so but again it's the the they're on steroids and hormones and stuff and i didn't that, touch that. anything yeah. i didn't touch yeah. anything like that so is, so is the test that they do to see on a natural it, show that is, is, a, is a yeah. Test. yeah yeah and also as well because i know earlier on again it done it we go back to old school i can imagine like a competition day there's a lot of respect for each other but also is the the opposite to respect is there a lot of competition with each other because you hear of not not in in other fields and other sports there can be like very like bitchiness there can be like dirty tricks there can be all these kind of things yeah does that happen as well or is it just more i think it is but i think it's quite limited right okay. i think it is quite limited yeah. but you, you tend to support you, you it's very supportive yeah. you know because at the end of the day the people who are there to watch you again you're not as you you don't feel as bad once you get on the stage you want to do it again and again because you, before you do bodybuilding and before you understand bodybuilding all you see is yourself vulnerable in a bikini or in a little pair of undies if you're a man standing on a stage with the world looking at your body whereas it's not people are looking at a physique and that becomes different then yeah. so your whole mindset around your body becomes different um so there's, a, there's an element of respect because people don't go to a bodybuilding show. To, I'm sure there are people there, but to, you know, look at women in bikinis or men in undies, it's it's the respect for the sport. Otherwise, yeah. you and the enjoyment of it. Otherwise, yeah. you couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't and also, watch you, it. You, yeah, because if you've got the knowledge, 
It's the respect of like you know that 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 the, the you know the glutes or the lats. And the, you know what you're looking yeah, for, and yeah. yeah. And that's something else I wanted to ask you. So as well as doing all the training and everything else, did you find yourself become a bit of um, a sponge to wanting to know everything about the subject? Oh yeah. Do, are, you, yeah. are you somebody who I need to know everything? I yeah. Need to, yeah. 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 And the thing the thing is with with bodybuilding as well, you never know who's going to show up on the day. So when you're kind of racing somebody, you know, that such and such is running from Manchester or yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, you know, yeah. You've got an idea, but on the day, you never know who's going to show up and what they're going to look like. Because again, that dehydration process and your posing, posing is a massive thing as well. That brings your condition in. And when you see them, everybody posing on the stage, it, it's kind of made to look easy. And it's so difficult. And it's especially difficult on yeah. show day because you're trying to kind of hold a quad in then and automatically you're breathing out and you need to be breathing in then you need to lift your shoulders then your shoulders need to be a certain level then your body then you need to flip and there's so many things to think of and when they do so they ask you to do quarter turns so you start at the front and they'll say quarter turn to the left and then you turn and you're showing each side and then a quarter turn again so where's your, your the back of you is to there and you'd like give an effort and you've got squeezing your you know your back together making yeah. sure your, your your glutes are tight and yeah. you'll find that a lot of the competitors when you do go that way you're like you're so out of breath yeah. it just takes it so out so on the build up so is there like some kind of instruction manual where you know you're going to have to do these certain poses so you uh, like at home and in the gym have you been practicing all that oh you're and... practicing you're practicing and practicing and all day every day I don't know about you but like even just looking in the mirror and saying Oh, you know, I love you. To yourself is difficult. Yeah. yeah. So to just to, to try it, you know what I mean? That, 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 it becomes it becomes a disease and you becomes I always say it becomes a disease because I'd walk past my ovens which had like a reflective mirror and I'd drop my trousers and start posing I in front of the oven yeah, yeah. because it was just everything, every opportunity and I'm not vain. And it's not But you've vanity. got to get it right. That's not, yeah, yeah, and it doesn't yeah. come from a vanity. Perfectionism, yeah. really. And that's another misconception because you see all the sparkly bikinis and the makeup and everything else. And half of these people and these women yeah. were kind of just wearing old socks and trainees day in, day out because you haven't got time to look like that when you're, you know, on the, the bones of your arse with food-wise and yeah. everything else. You know, you yeah. can't eat and you can't do this and you're struggling to even, you know, stay awake. Yeah. You know, it's really hard. So it's that whole misconception. So there's a lot of, again, it, and it's all down to discipline. There's no motivation. It's not a group of really motivated people. Like you see people in the gym and I've seen, see it all the time. You know, genetically, they could be Olympia champions genetically, but they just haven't got that little tiny yeah. bit that just takes you to yeah. that other level yeah. i remember going to see my coach the day before my first competition and um he was you know i was posing and everything else and it was his knowledge was incredible like he looked at me and he went how, how many how many um how much water have you got left how many how much liquids have you got left today and i said oh, i've got like 150 mil i'm gonna have like a little like black coffee when I get in or a little bit of water before bed or something and he looked at me and he went no 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 so he made me a coffee just by looking at me he knew what I needed just by wow. looking at me yeah um he made me a coffee and he's like tipping like little tiny bits out and he's you know without even measuring it he just knew his knowledge yeah. was phenomenal yeah. absolutely phenomenal um and we had a coffee and he said to me what does it feel like to be in the uh, top like three percent of the pop world's population and i was like whoa it gives me shivers now i was like oh wow wow, is that, is that wow. What it was? yeah yeah that's incredible isn't it? it's unbelievable isn't it and it's, it's, it, but again it, it comes down to you making that decision and and, and dedicating yourself and being disciplined yeah you know and, there was and, an and, excuse and, at every level yeah there was an excuse every day i'm too tired there's a party there's a there's an excuse to sleep to not train to, to eat a little bit more the, to not yeah. eat as, as much as there's always an excuse and if you look for an excuse you'll find one yeah, but ultimately it's knowing fixating on your goal understanding that it's not going to be plain sailing and sticking to that, knowing what the end result's going to be. No matter, again, going back to the manifestation, manifestation to me is sort of knowing what you want and having your eye on the prize. Not all this 
you know, we're going to meet in the salon and we're going to do yeah. the secret. We're going to write in our diary and then we're all going to sit at home yeah, and wait for someone to knock on the door and give us a Porsche. And, yeah. you know, it's not about that. It's about that. I, I've carried that through in business. You know, if you don't get up and get it done, it's not going to get done. And, and you know what? Just coming there, this is the kind of world we live in. So um, I recently did um, an episode where we was talking about, like, say, the vision board and manifestation. And I tried to keep it quite raw and real. To, to the reality, because yeah. we know what it's all about, really. And some young, you know, I think it was a young lady who had come along and they painted it in a completely different picture. Oh, I've got a picture of um, a, a Merc and a, a plane and blah, and I'm going to, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right? Which was, for me, so far from the reality of it all. But yet it goes out onto social media and then that hits 40, 50, 60,000 views the raw reality one nothing and that's the kind of society that we're actually because everybody because just that wants one, that easy because that's hard they don't and that's what it is i know that's going to encounter something hard it's like relationships you know you've been married for years have you am i right i've married? never got married but i've been together 27 yeah, years so that, yeah, partner, si- yeah similar so you know me and my husband we're 20 years married but we've been together 27 years yeah. and again it's kind of like people go like, well, what's the what's the secret? What's the key? Now we'll we'll have our good days. Oh, we, have our, we have our bad <laughs> days, yeah. But 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 what it is because it's when I say hard work, it's not a, a, a hard you know hard work in that sense. But yeah. if you argue or you have a disagreement or sorry, if you have a disagreement, it's not an argument. You need to yeah, understand that because right. we live in a world where if someone goes, well, actually, no, I disagree with what you're saying. I don't think you're right. I've got a. a um, She's she's someone that I work with actually. She's she's French. She's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and she is just straight down like she always says to me. You're you're, you're French. You're, you're it's like you're French because you just say it how it is. But she will just say it. Right. And she said, everybody around here, everyone like in England, just like we all beat around the bush all the time, you know. Yeah. Da, da. But Europeans are very straight forward, I and so. people take that yeah. the wrong way. So again. Another example of that, I took my daughter into a, um, a shop in Liverpool, Rituals it's called, and it's got all like um, scented, like, you know, hand soaps and body scrubs and this, that and the other. And I get all our toiletries from there and house sprays and it's all natural and everything yeah. else. I get that. And she went in and she's washing her hands and she was using, her and a friend were using all the different scrubs at the sink and the, this guy came over. It might have been Italian, maybe, and... Um, he said, no, them two, they don't go together. But the way he put it across, I knew what he was saying because yeah. I'm kind of straightforward. What yeah. he's trying to say to her is, oh, no, they're two different scents. You know, you wouldn't use them together. What yeah. she hears as, you know, a British child is, <laughs> you know, getting told off yeah, for, yeah. for putting two smells yeah. together. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell her, you know, no. Sometimes there's just a bit of a barrier because we're all, you know, if you want, if you if you want to, we'll yeah. do this, and if you can, if you can't, and that again, that holds us back. It's that apprehension, yeah. isn't it? I think so. You yeah, know, well, I can't do that. Well, yeah, but if I do that, I'll hit my ankle, and if I do this, and I can't do that, and that's kind of that's how we live, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got to break that cycle. You've got to break the cycle. Decide that you're going to discipline yourself. Ultimately, it's your choice. If I pick up this cup, I'm picking up the cup. If I'm putting it down, I'm putting it down. Yeah. You know, horse to water and all that, and yeah. and that's the that's the biggest yeah. lesson. And uh, yeah, and ultimately, and again, we, are, we everything comes back because excuses ultimately is fear. Yeah, it, it is. When you break it down, whichever level, it all comes back to. It's usually a fear of getting out of something, not wanting to do it or not feeling good enough, you know, and, the, it, you know, it's, it is a ripple of that. Uh, but the opposite of that, the fear, is the love. Yeah. And if you love something and love that you want to do it, nothing will stop you. No. Do you know, and I, I believe you can do that in anything in life. Yeah. You know, whether it's build a, a platform, yeah. whether that's become a, a champion bodybuilder, you know, anything, yeah. you know. And then what happens is as well, it's just getting to the level where you then feel, I'm okay here. Because not everybody has to get to the very top either. It's you. It's like your you, your top could be here to someone well, else. For me, well, the body, just... again, the bodybuilding. I, I got you know. I, I've I've placed in competitions, but again, there's people in this way in the bodybuilding world who take it another level. Again, yes. who want to go to the Olympia, who want their pro card, who want to do this and want to do that. 
I haven't got that fire to do that. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to show myself that I can do something That's and right. I can take control of my life and I'm not just waiting around for someone to do something or say something or Boris to say we can go outside again. It was yeah. it was completely different. I yeah. spoke spoke to my friend yesterday. Um, we, t- we took the children to watch the Harlem Globetrotters in, in Liverpool and she's running the London Marathon. And she asked me, she said, are you going to compete again? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. And not, again, I know it's not from a discipline point of view, but it's what I... It's what it takes yeah. to do it and what's the outcome yeah. of that. Some people are doing it for a profession. I don't. I've got a, I've got a job. I, you know, I run a business, so I've got three children. So for me, yeah. that I'd have to sacrifice something to do that and I, I'm not willing to do that. No, I agree. And because everyone... And also, as well, everybody's got their own level of what is their milestone. Yeah. And... and, and, and you you've achieved where you wanted to get to, but let's not take away somebody's milestone today could be getting out of bed. Oh, hundred percent. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. let's let's you know. It's really important people understand that. Like everybody has has got their own struggles, and today, if you got dressed today, and that was your milestone, definitely. then bloody fantastic. Definitely. Do you know definitely. I mean? But you know, it might be getting dressed today, but tomorrow it could be. Getting outside, but again, it's Enjoy. like it's like I said, it's you know, the bodybuilding, quitting, smoking, every 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 success story has some sort of um, like meaning behind, like the, yeah. the you know meaning behind it, and it's all it's metaphoric is the word I'm looking for. So all this kind of like cutting me calories and upping this and doing this and upping that and having a day where you feel tired and you kind of have to maybe up your calories a little bit more because you can't take them down that quick or, you know, have a little bit more of a rest day like the following day and just adjusting and and going with what you're doing. But all them little things are metaphoric of getting to your goals. It's all the same process and it's the discipline, it's the understanding and it's the accountability and that, they, that's the formula yeah. right there. And, and that that's almost like, you know, when people say, enjoy the journey, not just the destination. Yeah. But all them little things that you did, the eating, the training, the getting up, going to, in your Doc Martins, yeah. that is the journey. And that's what I enjoyed the most. Yeah. yeah. You know. And and a lot of people miss that. They miss same the, with the smoking. Uh, although I didn't enjoy the journey at the time of quitting smoking, I'm, I'm made up, I've... I've I haven't smoked for years and years, yeah. but it's that journey that taught me a lot Definitely. about myself. And it's the same with the bodybuilding. You know, it's it's everything, every success story is, it just requires them little elements that are put in, the good and the bad. But we don't see it. We live in a world of social media. So yeah. we'll see, you know, you'll see pictures of me on the stage and wow, you know, People say it all the time. You look absolutely incredible, but they didn't know I was crying, thinking I was too fat for the stage the day before. No, the, no, you know so. the body dysmorphia, not not on a not on a like a proper body dysmorphia, like a condition level, yeah, but, but what you experience, but on your own level, yeah. what you experience, because that's the world that you're living in. Because everyone around you is like sort of got lower, might have lower body fat and this, that, and the other, or this, or the the quads are a little bit more developed than yours, or the shoulders, or the glute. You know, there's that element of it. So that's again going into that world of who you surround yourself in, and you know, me now living in that world with all them, I wouldn't fit in because my me, me body just doesn't, I'm not living that world, I'm not counting my calories, I'm not doing this yeah. now, I'm not trying to cut and get down to a low body fat percentage. So again, it's adapting your surroundings to, to be successful. Yeah. If I'd have surrounded myself with people, like you say, in the pub, I wouldn't have succeeded, even though I'm accountable. No. Is it worth putting yourself in a scenario where you're going to sit with people eating pub dinners and drinking pints when you're pulling out a bit of chicken? And again, it's not even down to the environment, it's the people in that environment. Yeah. And then, why are you doing that? What are you doing that for? Why? And if you're told these things enough, you break. Yeah, it does. It, it's, do. very it's very difficult. You break. You break. I, I, I do that myself, where like I'll have the best intentions, I'll say to the missus or something, I'm not drinking at this party, we're going to not, I'll drive, whatever. Yeah. You get there, you get talking, and before you know, are you having one? Are you having one? Oh, yeah. no, no. And then, what are you not drinking for? What are you not drinking? Mm. And before I'll go, I'll get a taxi then. And before you know it, you and you think, well, I'm so People, weak. It's <laughs> not, it's, you, yeah, but it's kind of, you know, and, and again, you know, I, I, I tucked into some nachos last night. I'm not weak. 
I know I'm, you know, again, it's how you view yourself. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not weak in that sense. That was just a decision I made. Yeah. I just won't make that decision every day and every evening because I yeah. know what the outcome will be exactly. if I keep making that decision. You know, I make a decision to have a couple of glasses of wine, you know, on a Friday and a Saturday and, you know, but if I'm doing that on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday, I know what the outcome could possibly be. Yeah. So it's understanding what outcomes are. And and again, just just sort of being accountable yeah. for for your actions. So you've gone out and you've probably had a really good time, and you've, you know, you've gone home and, and whatever. <laughs> but again, it's like that that surrounding that who that environment is really important. It's I it's think it's really really important. Yeah. And people don't people are offended, aren't they? People are offended at you. I think that's what gets you. Yeah. It, you're thinking how someone else is thinking. It's like oh, they, you know. Are they thinking I'm boring because I'm not having a drink? Are they thinking that? And really, yeah. I suppose we should be get to a point in our lives where we're like, I don't really care what you think. But that's <laughs> you know? what they say. When you, whatever journey that you go on, you will you will lose people or you will lose the dynamics with some people. Yeah. You know, so some people might think you're really great at one point, and then you know, again, oh, where's she gone? Because she's not out on the, on the smoking shelter at work anymore. No, yeah. she's she thinks she's better than everyone else because she's quit smoking, or she's yeah. a, you know you get all that that element to it, don't yeah. you? Or you know it's and what I got, I tell you what else I got from it as well. Understanding how important it is to to learn to love yourself because and 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 be happy and content in yourself, which is something that you do have to work on, you know, all the time. But I went from being in the best condition of my life. To, and people going, wow, it's incredible. And then another load of people going, what the hell are you doing? You look so thin. You need to eat. You know, again, people thinking they can just open the mouths and say it how it is. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the same people, when I put loads of weight on because I was trying to um, build muscle and I'd, I hadn't reversed dieted properly, I hadn't come out of it because you, again, going back into the bodybuilding, when you come out of diet and you're meant to add calories quite slowly because your metabolism's a little bit everywhere. Okay. So if you start having, like, you go from 800 calories a day to 3,000 calories a day, your body doesn't know what hits it, so it just stores it as fast as fat, so you, you'll rebound. Right. So that's why people will say, oh, bodybuilders go fat when they're older and yeah. that kind of thing. Um. So with that in mind, I ended up putting like I was about three stone heavier than stage weight, which was technically heavier than my normal weight by about stone and a half anyway. Um and then people were commenting then, you know, are you gonna go are you gonna train? Are you going back training? Are you thinking of cutting weight? And <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and I was crying at one point where I was so thin, hating myself. Not hating myself, that's the wrong way, but not thinking I was good enough. Yeah. And then looking at myself when I'm going on holiday to Dubai, going, holy shit, I'm like three stone heavier than what I should be, yeah. And just like learning, like no matter what, if you're not happy, you're not happy. You'd have to put yourself into a into a frame of mind where you've just got to be happy and, and accept, not accept, I don't think you should accept what you like, but know that there's something you can do about it. And that's something I did. I, I thought I can be like that in a few months. And then I can be like that in a few weeks. Yeah. And it's all in my control. And that's the main thing. And that's, I think that's the main thing. Well, yeah. You know, from this podcast as well is, is uh, you know, taking that responsibility. You are in control. Well, you could be a bodybuilder. You know. Yeah, yeah. What's, but, yeah. What's, what's, I mean, I've never, I've never been in a gym no, but in my what life. I'm, but that's yeah, what I'm but saying. Yeah, there's absolutely yeah, there's nothing, is there? nothing yeah. stopping yeah. you. There's some, you know, we, we'll, you're looked at as a different person if you're a bodybuilder or, you know, a, a a football player, you, you're some sort of different person. Yeah. Someone said to me actually in the gym, in the boxing gym, I said, oh, I'm rubbish because I love boxing. I'm not really good at it, but I, I love I love the, the training with boxing. And um, I just said, oh, I'm rubbish at boxing. And he said, uh, he said, rubbish is only temporary. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, yeah. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Because it is, isn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Again, and once you decide that is what I want to do, how do you learn to play the piano? You don't, you, you know, have again, to start, you have to you know, start somewhere, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I saw a video the other day, and it was a gentleman. He was being asked a question on the beach, and uh, he looked fantastic, and he was sixty. Yeah. Right. And they were asking him how he, you know, they were asking him a bit about it, and I just thought, like, I'm forty six, and I'm thinking, 
and he, he was just so much more flexible, so much stronger than you know what I mean. And he's got fifteen years on me, and yeah. I'm, and and like me and my missus often we say like, is your body supposed to hurt it like this? You know, you sat at home and you get a pain in your head, a pain in your arm, a pain here, a pain, and you're like. You know, they don't tell you this when you're growing up, do they? You know, but then the other side of it is like, well, maybe we wouldn't have so many aches and pains or we'd be able to bend down and tie our shoelaces easier if we did something about it. Mm. You know, we're very, well, I'm definitely very lazy. My missus has got quite good. She Unfortunately, she got diagnosed with diabetes and that really sent her on a different direction. Yeah, yeah. But we really, we don't want our lives to hit um, a buffer before we do something about it, do we? No. Do you know what I mean? Um, really, we want to take responsibility. But and again, you can't wait for you can't wait for willpower, and you can't wait for you know cut, you've yeah. got it. You've just got to go. That's what I'm going to do today. And if you don't do it today, you're not going to do it. It has to, know, it has yeah, to be. It has, it has to, to be yeah, done. Yeah. It just has to be done. Yeah. You know, and we do we do put things to one side, and that's okay. Sometimes you can't beat yourself up about it. You know, yeah. when the time's right, the time's right. So I took a bit of time out of training altogether. Um, shoulder injury it was getting me down and tendonitis in my arm and it was just like one thing after another after another and I felt more achy and you know tight in, in my hips I'm in my 40s and I was starting to realise that and I said I don't know whether I've always I've had that before but the masking of like the sore muscles and the tired muscles was masking the yeah. other aches and pains or whether that's just not moving right. there's just no movement there your body's moving yeah. And I mean, ultimately, when it comes to health, we, we talk about all these different subjects, you know, health, wealth, happiness, manifestation. But ultimately, if you've not got a good vessel, which is your body, that is the that is the biggest thing that you've ever got in your life, isn't it? You've oh, got yeah. to take responsibility and look after yeah. your health. Yeah. And that, that's one area of my life. I'm definitely the last 10, 15 years I've neglected. I've been really bad because I used to always run off marathons, train for marathons, always played football. And then, unfortunately, like what happens in life, again, it's excuses. When the kids come along and business and stress and worry, yeah, you, you know, you oh, I'll get home from work, I'm tired, I'll have a <laughs> bottle of beer, you know, that kind of stuff, or I'll have a takeaway because it's... And yeah. it's, it's, it's bad discipline and it's basically excuses. Um, and then I found myself heavier than I've ever been. You know, but that again, kind of thing, ag- again, you know, another friend said to me, he's a boxing coach in, in, the, in the boxing gym... He, I, I said, oh, I'm just as I was getting back into my fitness, going back a little bit now, um, I was like, oh, flipping heck. You, I know I was training with the pro boxers, you know, calling them little girls and everything, you know, worse words than that, but I won't say it on here, but that's the kind of thing that I was saying, like having a bit of banter with them. I said, and I'm struggling, like, you know, 20 minutes on a bike, you know, or 20 minutes training. And he went, love. He said, that was then, this is now. Yeah. So let's just do let's just do now. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's true. You go, we we dwell. Yeah. You know, and you talking about how you used to run half marathons and how you used to do this and life does get in the way. Yeah. And and it doesn't mean that you know that's the end of it because you can't be who you were. You'll never be who you were then. Yeah. But in your head, do you not find so? Like in my head, I think I can still go out and play football. But reality is, if I put my boots on, by the time I run into the pitch. I'm yeah. out of breath and, uh, but again, and it, it's just... <laughs> because, but you can, but you've just got to take, you've got to take the rough with the smooth, you've got to take the fact that you're going to be blowing out your arse for the first, <laughs> you know, yeah. few yeah. weeks of it. Yeah. And then you're going to, you know, you then... then yeah, and it's all about, like, imbri- knowing that when things are feeling tough or feeling hard, it's going to get easier in the sense that you're going to start seeing a difference in your body or feeling a difference in your health in your mental well-being when you said about did I see my body change the what I see my body change because I had to take check-in pictures yeah so I didn't actually notice anything different about my body till probably till the very end when I was extremely lean and I had you know ab like abs and I was like whoa abs you know yeah. um but when I look at the pictures the check-in pictures to see that change and that difference does make you feel good. And it makes you, I think the main thing as well, what makes you feel good is knowing that you have the power over it. Yeah. Again, not going, oh, isn't Weight Watchers great because I've lost weight with Weight Watch? No, you've lost weight because you stuck to a plan that yeah. Weight Watchers wrote. Yeah. Yeah. But Weight Watchers ain't coming in and cutting your fat off or yeah. pulling the calories out your body every time you eat a piece of cake. 
and it's the same with that and and that's having con- it was amazing how you could have so much control over your body to make it flat make your muscles pop be dehydrated and and when you when you become so lean and fine-tuned you can see a tiny thing a tiny difference so if you've had a little bit more you can see that difference or you'll just wake up and you see how le- much leaner you were than what you were the day before because you're that lean wow you can see that little difference yeah, yeah which is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable tremendous it's tremendous. amazing right well i'm going to ask god um as we bring this to an end i'm going to ask you put you on the spot a little bit go on if you could from all your life experience to date yeah if you could leave a message to the world um some wisdom from Rachel Fay, kids growing up, something that could they could learn from. Well, what kind of thing would you say? What kind of message would you give you know people? I'd say stop thinking everything's easy because it's not. No matter the good things and the bad things have hard and easy moments and be accountable. You are accountable. It's not someone else's fault that you said this. It's not someone else's fault that you you know you you punched them or you had an argument with them because they said this or they punched it. You are accountable for everything. You are fully in control of what you do, good and the bad. And it's not about stop waiting for motivation to happen because it's not about that. Start getting disciplined. Set your goals. Get disciplined and stick to them. Surround yourself, even if it's just for that moment in time, with the people that are going to nurture your goals and your aspirations. And that's it. Love that's it. my wisdom. Love it. I love it. <laughs> my I kids love it. will disagree. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and with that, I hope you've enjoyed this amazing episode here at Drake, Michigan, uh, with the lovely Rachel Fay. Thanks for having me. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I will see you again next time. Thanks very much. Bye.